care if you've been killing raping goblins all night. If you up, smash that like button. Welcome to Black and the Black Times Infinity. I'm your host, Kadoo Lewis Property, coming to you live and direct from the stack. Smoke me off, fam, with that dang shit. On my left, Lou. Hey, if you get a fan request from me, you know what? It might be me. God damn. I'm a far right engineer on the ones and twos, talking to people on the three sports chronos. My balls was hot. Oh. <laughs> Y'all, uh, y'all watch UFC. The last I UFC? did see that. That's a great quote. That was great. That was a great quote. Um, we do not have old Ninja. He's in the wind, and Stitch is still saving well, some cities. I heard the uh, old Ninja had to take another dip in a Lazarus pit. So, God <laughs> damn, it's you know a while what? to recover. That seems accurate. <laughs> that checks out. Uh, who uh, got anybody up in there for that chat? Uh, the chat I see yes. somebody. Wild dog, what's going on? Good to see you again. He's fucking consistent. He is consistent. Yeah, yeah. Thank Love you, that dude. And yes. Bad woman is badass and foxy. I'm just saying, she's a good looking, good looking woman. I, you know? Yeah, well, we're gonna get on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, come, we'll come to it. We'll come yeah, to uh, it. Listener of the week would be uh, Brendan Sanderlin. Nice, that's Our, fam. Well, they that's changed their icons on there, like uh, for the SoundCloud app. Oh yeah, yeah, they didn't have that before, or yeah. maybe I just didn't notice. Um, of course, I'm struggling to remember the actor's name, but Herschel from The Walking Dead passed, and R.I.P. to him. Is that Scott Wilson? Uh, I don't know. Is that Scott Wilson? Maybe. Uh, Shit, I'm can, not entirely sure. We can use those interwebs yeah. to confirm, but we all know Herschel from The Walking Dead on the farm. I think he was 76. Yes, yeah, it is. Scott okay. Wilson. Scott Wilson. R.I.P. to him, man. Um, it feels like we just saw him like a few years ago on The Walking Dead, you know? Even though it's been more than a few years. Maybe yeah. like four? Yeah. Three, four? Probably like season five? Six? Yeah. Shit. Maybe a while ago. Yeah. yeah. That's His character while. died. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that was my first time really seeing the guy. And, you know, again, R.I.P. to him. And then the big stuff, like literally today, was this Category 4 shit and Panhandle and all over uh, fucking the, the Gulf Coast and shit for Florida with Hurricane Michael is what they're calling it? Yeah, yeah. These hurricanes are, every year there's so much fucked up weather that hits, you know, especially the southeast. Yeah. It's just, it's awful. And the Caribbean. Time. Yeah, yeah. When I say southeast, I mean the southeast of uh, United States. Sorry, I know we have international listeners, but yeah, it hits uh, the Gulf of Mexico obviously pretty hard as well. Mm-hmm. So. Like I don't want to be fucked up, but I saw a meme before we we, we went on, and it said um, they're like Hurricane uh, Michael is a category. Hee hee. God damn <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, people lose. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, people losing their homes and properties. Fucking yeah. sad. I haven't seen anything about death toll, but I'm sure there will be some. Unfortunately, uh, thoughts and it sounds cliche, but thoughts and prayers to everybody affected over there let's jump in we got shit to talk about we got shit to discuss uh this is gonna be a real interesting cast uh actually we're gonna we'll save venom just a little bit you want to you want to start off with this ufc 229 uh yeah ufc 229 was uh first of all it was fucking amazing i thought it was it was pretty cool uh but it was obviously marred in some controversy so they, they had some really good fights uh michelle waterson versus uh felice herring who i personally think is pretty hot uh, actually both of them are pretty fucking hot uh that was a really good fight uh the other fight with what was the fucking guy's name it was Ke- uh ferguson versus uh pettis that was the thing with the fight of the fight of the night, which is was was deserved, I guess, because they were fucking throwing down. Is that the big dude that no, had your quote? Who's no, the, who's that, the guy that, with the that was Derek Lewis versus uh, Nikolai Volkov or okay, something like with that. With his balls being hot. Yeah, that was great too because uh, Derek Lewis, no, otherwise known as the Black Beast, he turned on Instagram. He's like one of the best Instagram pages of all time. Wow, what's he have uh, on there? He's just he's fucking funny, man. Mm. Uh, he's a guy that he's got a crazy like background. He, he's been to jail, like turned his life around. God damn, great dude. Uh, basically, he was getting his ass kicked for. Uh, three rounds and actually, basically, fuck, basically three rounds in the last ten seconds, he knocked the fucking dude out. Damn. And yeah, big heavyweight, right? Big heavyweight. Yeah, he's pushing. He's probably over two sixty when he's not fighting. Big boy. And after he won, he immediately took off his shorts. Luckily, he was wearing underwear because some dudes they just wear like their cup underneath. Mm-hmm. But he's wearing underwear. Took his pants. And then the first question Joe asked, Joe Rogan asked, was, "Hey man, why'd you take your pants off?" And he said. My balls was hot, man. <laughs> that's truth. That's why I took his shorts off. But yeah, he's uh, he was pretty funny. He was really honest too because uh, in the fight he was obviously he was looking kind of tired and, and slow. And he said, "Hey, man, I got you know," because he was asking, you know, what 
what are you, you going to do next? It's like, I'm not ready for a title shot because uh, I need to work on my cardio, man. Like, he was super honest about it. And he said that, uh, what did he say? He said that President Trump called him up and said to whoop that uh, Russian's ass. And then he was just bullshitting about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that that's, really? That, that's just his personality. So right. Really funny. And so after he talked about, you know, he's not ready for a title shot yet, because he's number two in the UFC in, okay. in that weight class. Uh, one day later, what does the UFC do? They gave him a title shot against DC, which nice. I do not think he's going to fare well. Especially, you're not going to gain uh, that much cardio uh, in less than a month. Oh, that's how soon it is? Oh, it's shit. on November 3rd. I'm damn. like, dude, that's damn. Basically, they just they just thrown under the wolves. That's Jesus. fucked up. Yeah, I think it's really fucked up. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm sure he's game for the fight. He's always got to punch his chance, but DC is just gonna take him down and just fuck him up. Like if he doesn't, if Derek doesn't knock him out. So yeah, uh, and then uh, the fight, uh, you know, that everybody's talking about was Conor McGregor versus. Uh, no, that's no big deal. Okay, uh, Conor McGregor versus uh, uh, Khabib, Khabib Nurmagomedov. It was a fantastic fight. It went the way that I thought it was going to go. It was either going to be Conor McGregor knocking out uh, Khabib or Khabib wrestle fucking the dude to death. When I say wrestle fuck, I mean just taking him down and beating the shit out of somebody. And that's what Khabib did for four rounds. He beat the shit out of Conor McGregor. Like, it was pretty dominant. And uh, he ends up getting... Uh, it wasn't a rear naked choke, even though it probably went down in the books as a rear naked choke. It was more like a rear naked crank even though he had the hand over the face because he didn't actually have his arm underneath his throat so he's kind of cranking and pulling his head back he's gonna break his neck so he had to tap Damn. so it was somebody wants to think that oh he just chopped it and looked like a choke if i put you in that same that same hold you will tap or i'm gonna break your fucking neck that that's one of the things that when somebody talks about like a neck crank you're tapping because you're worried that your, your neck is gonna break and it's very fucking painful mm. so everybody talks about oh he just talks he's a pussy bitch you don't even fucking roll like I already know you don't even fucking you don't do any kind of goddamn grappling you, you don't know what it's like when somebody's r- trying to rip your fucking head off so just shut the fuck up Conor McGregor he did the best that he could and he tapped at something to where he probably could have died so and this was, this yeah. was his first loss in UFC fight? no no he's lost no. a few times oh okay so, yeah he lost in uh, Nate Diaz like three fights ago so oh, okay yeah He's not the UFC's best fighter. He's just he talks the best shit, and he he talks his way he talks his way into fights, and he's the UFC's biggest draw right now. That's his biggest. He's thing. the face of the league. Yeah, he's the biggest draw. So uh, after Khabib won, uh, he walked around the ring real quick, and then he was looking at somebody in the in the crowd, and he jumped over the fence, and then proceeded to get into a fight. And with somebody in the crowd, which I'll explain in a second. And then during that same time, the cameras cut back, and then somebody jumped into the octagon mm-hmm. and punched Conor McGregor in the face. Damn. Yeah. And so I guess I got, I'll break this down for you because a lot of people they think that they don't understand really what happened <laughs> during these these events. So uh, there's a couple of things that Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor and his team did that I think kind of stepped over the line in shit talking. One of them was uh, they were talking shit to. To Khabib about his religion He's and, about his, and about his his dad and about some other shit that was like, hey man, you know you should probably like chill the fuck out with that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like talking shit about somebody's like it, I said it publicly. If Khabib would have been darker skinned, there would have been outrage for the way that Conor McGregor was talking to him. You know what I mean? Calling him a Muslim rat and shit like that. Terrorist. Like that, jokes. Yeah, and a terrorist and shit like that. That shit was fucked up. I, I don't think that there's no place. I mean, you could talk shit, but I mean. You can't like tear down somebody. That's that's pretty fucked up. And there's obviously gonna be some retribution. Obviously, Connor paid the price. And I guess uh, after Khabib had won, uh, Dylan Dennis, who's a, who's a big name in the jiu-jitsu community, he's also uh, an MMA fighter now in Bellator. He yelled out that Khabib was a Muslim rat, and that set him off. That's why he jumped after the fight. After the fight, that's okay. why he jumped out and went after him. And at the same time, after Khabib jumped out, this is part of the thing that you didn't see on the UFC because they cut to Khabib jumping out of the ring. Mm-hmm. As soon as Khabib jumped out of the ring, one of the guys that were in the ring that was one of, on Khabib's uh, team, mm-hmm. they jumped on the fence to see what the fuck was going on, like where he was going. Yeah, and when he did that. Connor punched that guy on the fence. I did hear that. So after that is when the other guy jumped in the ring and then punched Connor. Damn. So yeah, it was it was bad all around. But like if you just watch the fight, it seems like Khabib just went off and then his teammates went off and like did some fucked up shit. But it wasn't all on Khabib and his team. Yeah, that's that's a lot a lot going on. Um, people kill over religion, like oh they definitely do. Yeah, but you know. 
it seemed like it was all right. I think they, what, Dana White said something about it being over a $2 million, uh, in pay-per-view money or $2 million views or well, whatever the, the in pay-per-view? Two mi- the $2 million you're thinking of. So they, they withheld Khabib's purse, his entire purse of $2 million. No, 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 not, not that part, but the pay-per-view, like, actual, oh, it was, like. I think it was the second highest. Yeah, it was a really well-watched yeah. fight um, was, all the way around. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there, there, there's no controversy on Colin losing whatsoever. No, no, I, no, not at all. I just, just what happened afterwards. And I think that the UFC did a really good job with hiring extra, extra security because they saw how much shit talking was being done. Mm. And they knew that they were having Russians and the Irish uh, in the building. And they really, at the time, they don't they didn't like each other. So, Ooh, yeah. so they, they actually broke everything up as fast as they possibly could have. So help me out, though. This was at MGM, right? Yeah. Okay. So And some of the violence spilled over into the... It wasn't like a... Who was it? Uh, Tyson versus Holyfield. Where fucking shit at the fan. It spilled over into the fucking casino. Yeah. It wasn't like that. But that some, some violence did. That wasn't the same Tupac night, though, right? Not that uh, one. I don't think Not so. Not that. It's like the night where he bit his ear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Nevada's Athletic Commission, are they in charge of security or the MGM as well? Who's in charge of security? So security is is up to the UFC and the MGM Grand. Okay. And so uh, Dana White said they they had hired extra security to, to cover the event because he knew that someone was, might might pop off. Mm, and so, it did. And it got broken up like real quick. I yeah. think that Khabib and Dennis exchanged maybe a blow or two. And, that, and then they were immediately broken up. You know who was so. fucking scared of shit and pissing his pants? <laughs> Motherfucking Drake. He oh, was doing man. that fucking wide-eyed look like, oh, uh, shit. Because yeah. he was in Collins' camp before holding the Irish flag for yeah. some fucking reason. I was yeah, like, what yeah. are you doing, Drake? Take care of your fucking kids, Drake. Yeah, you're from Canada. <laughs> yeah, Canada. well, the crazy thing also, too, is that, that was really bad about that fight. Uh, where there has to be consequences is because, is because the governor of Nevada was in the crowd at the time. And he had to run out of the fucking arena because the fucking shit just fucking blew up and God, he was like damn. I'm not sticking around for this shit yeah, yeah. No so <laughs> but didn't they ask uh, Dana White he's like the chairman of uh, the UFC right C- was or CL something like that president. they like I think I, I read this somewhere they asked him like hey you know are you gonna make it so like you know the, the athletes can't like down like make fun of people's religion and stuff like that and he was like no yeah, you can't. That's like kind of the draw. I mean, you, you can't. Or the pill of wrestle or the of UFC fights. Right. Well, I mean, talking shit is. I mean, that's part of the fight game, right? Yeah. But I think there is there is a line that you probably shouldn't cross, but I'm not going to go as far to say that to make it illegal per se. It's just I think it's more of a common decency kind of thing to not go after certain things. Like you can't like talking shit about somebody's like family. That's that's to me, in my mind that's over the line. That's fucked up. And that's one of the things that he did. And religion, too, like, that's... I mean, you're fighting. I understand you might not like him for the fight or whatever, but, uh... Yeah, you pissed off a fucking Russian killer. Yeah. <laughs> and that's basically what he did. Literally, in the fight, I think it was in the, th- the third round, if you... There's, like, a, there's a video of it where, like, Khabib is... He's ground and pounding him, and as he's hitting him, Connor in the face, he's like, let's talk now. Punch. Let's yep. talk now. Punch. I was like, dude. Damn. He's like, Tano machine. Shit. <laughs> yeah. He, do- he dominated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't see it live, but I saw the whole thing afterwards, and they, they're... It was a pretty wasn't lopsided like victory. He wasn't he won like the, the first punch had McGregor kind of wobbling. Not the first punch. There was a, there was a few punches that uh, that Khabib landed that one of them knocked him on his ass. Yeah. So yeah, and there was a few that you could tell he was like he was fucked up. <laughs> he was he just was not prepared. Like it's hard to prepare for somebody that's been wrestling for like basically their entire lives. You can look up videos of Khabib Nurmagomedov wrestling a bear when he was a child. Wrestling a fucking bear. I did see that. Was I wasn't child. sure if that was legit. Is that, that legit, legit? legit? Legit. It was like in the 90s on some grainy yes, video. When huh? he was a kid. Like his own VHS yeah. tape, man. Where's Child Protective Dude. Services <laughs> with, in Russia? <laughs> they're not going to fucking they Dagestan, bro. <laughs> they ain't going to fucking Dagestan. They, they yeah. should have, he should have came out like a news press and be like, I'll break you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Comes out and kick his ass. I mean, so, he basically did. He said he wanted to Rearrange his face. Yeah, yeah. She, damn it. Obviously, he's, he's he's got a thick accent. He's a great fighter. Yeah, but and he actually, when he's in the when he's training, he's actually in the front, in the Bay Area. Oh wow! He okay. trains at AKA in San Jose. Wow, that's impressive. Can you dig it? He's, no, he's oh, well. Hold on. <laughs> he's undefeated. He he just beat you know the face of the league. Can you switch things up and make him kind of your poster boy? Uh, is it possible? Either? I don't think so um, right now because the UFC has really been putting a lot of stock into somebody that can really rile up the crowds, for better or for worse. And that's Ooh. what they're doing. And 
he is not that kind of person. He is usually very respectful. He's very conservative. Um, if you look at any of his other wins, he usually picks the guy up, pats him on the back, you know, is talking to him and stuff. He's never disrespectful out of, after a win. Even before the fight, he's never talking any kind of ridiculous shit. You know what I mean? Because the way he was brought up was about respect in a traditional martial art kind yeah. of way. And uh, he said that in, in the press conference, he said anything that the that the UFC is going to do to me is not going to compare with what my dad's going to do to me. He's like, my, okay. my dad's going to smash you. Is that his know. trainer too? Or initial trainer? Uh, Yeah, when he was growing up. That makes but sense. But now, now it's, uh, I forget who's training him now, but... So, uh, but you're saying, though, because of his personality, even if he stays undefeated for, I don't know, five or six more fights... Yeah, they, he, they he still, still he, he still can't market him, huh? No, no, it's the same reason why yeah. they don't market uh, Daniel Cormier. He's a nice guy. That's why they, they always marketed John Jones over Daniel Cormier because John Jones okay. is way more controversial. He is know? controversial, but it seems like uh, Khabib has some controversy now. Well, right? now, but he's not. I mean, that's that's one incident. You mm. know, what I mean, I'll, I don't think that'll ever happen again. And mm. it's only because of like the amount of shit talking that. Connor did, and I think that he put the whole division on notice. Like, hey, maybe not go there. Nation, <laughs> you know nation's I mean? going to go so far. There yeah. You go. All right. There it is. There it is. It was definitely some buzz on Saturday and into Sunday about this. So we shall see. It was a great card. I mean, great card. Even though there were some, I think there were some pullouts in the card. That, that Tony Ferguson fight versus Anthony Pettis, that shit was fucking awesome. It was bloody as fuck. Um, I feel bad for, uh, for Anthony Pettis because he got fucked up. Like, his face got... He had so many fucking lacerations on his face and they stopped the fight because he broke his fucking hand. So, damn. damn. Yeah. Womp, womp, da wah. Alright, we gonna switch it up? Well, let's, uh, you wanna give a little update on the status of the Infinity Base 3.0? Yeah, yeah. So the Infinity Base 3.0, we finished the the base of the floor last weekend. Yeah, yeah. And uh, today at my lunchtime, I, me and K Max, dad, my father in law, uh, we did the the frame for the back wall. So okay. we're, we'll make some more progress. I'll, I'll, we'll skin the wall probably tomorrow. Uh, make some more progress on on the walls. Uh, we should have at least three walls done. Maybe even four okay. by on Saturday. All right. So, so I'm hoping they're done and skinned uh, on Saturday. It's it's not a very hard process. You got to make sure they're fucking square. That's about it. So we're we're making making good progress. So good. well, it's kind of cool because over the weekend, like um, I helped out with doing the flooring, and we got to use a fucking manly ass tool. We got to use a fucking nail gun off yeah. of an air compressor. <laughs> and at first, that shit was a little bit scary, just because you know I watched like. Um, Final Destination, and there's like a scene where the guy's like using a nail gun, and he missed the the, the stud, and it hits like a beam or something, and the nail bounces back and oh, gets fuck. the guy in the eye. <laughs> yeah. So every time I would go down and shoot the nail gun, I'd be like, fuck, don't let this be the one. <laughs> you ain't got no goggles on, safety first? We baby, you have gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's like a safety, on this one there's a safety. You have to like okay. literally press it against an object and then, you know, uh, pull the trigger. But. Can't just shoot out nails like fucking John Wick and shit? No, no. <laughs> You'd have to like disable the this, this safety to do that. It's, it, but yeah, yeah, it's fucking cool to do. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty fucking... It, it was, it's actually harder than it looks because the, the nail gun is so fucking heavy. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, you have, like, to get the safety to, like, activate or deactivate or whatever, you have to push pretty hard on it. But then when you shoot it, that kickback is kind of, like, yeah. intense. So it's like, damn, like, fuck, you gotta be real manly to do this shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, all day, just... Like, when you see the videos where the guys just pop, 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 I'm like, how the fuck are they doing that? Because I was like, Psh, oh, damn, I need to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, you're, you're can get, uh, can get pretty tired. It's funny because like people ask me, uh, who did you hire to do your shed? I'm like, it's me and my mm-hmm. friends. Like, <laughs> you don't need... I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's not my skill set. I'm not, I'm not a fucking construction worker by any means. But... I'm not a fucking idiot. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I, I know how to ask for help. I know how to fucking take measurements. I, you know, I know how to fucking... But, you know, th- for the measurements, I leave all that shit to my father-in-law because he, he knows what the fuck he's doing all that shit. He does. He just tells me, hey, he writes, puts the lines down. This is where you, you know, put shit. We're good to go. There you go. You know, it's it's, it's actually not that hard if, if you're... Anybody out there that wants to put together their own shed, I'd highly recommend just buy a kit and just fucking do it yourself. And then get your friends together and then figure it out. Yeah. Get to- Give them beer after, though. Don't, yeah, not yeah, before. Not before. Yeah, yeah. You definitely <laughs> want to make sure shit is, like, straight. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Measure twice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 jump in on this one. Uh, we had talked about this for fucking months all of this year. Tom Hardy's Venom finally fucking dropped last goddamn week. I seen it. There's gonna be some lightish spoilers, a little bit. I got, you know, we gotta talk about this shit because yeah. this is a big comic book movie. Uh, before we even go in, it did well. 
Yeah. Surprisingly well. And this this movie is, is one of those movies where you gotta say, you know what? Fuck the critics because the critics gave it like really low ratings, but the public gave it higher ones. The biggest fuck you um, from a critic standpoint was whoever the fuck did the uh, the quote of this is worse than Catwoman. From early mid two thousand or whatever the fuck. Holly Berry's Catwoman. Yeah, the Holly Berry Catwoman. Uh, I was like, wow. Yeah, that's that's a stretch. Yeah, you know, because that was pretty bad. That was awful. But it did um, worldwide, not opening in China, which is fucking huge. Um, It did like two hundred five million opening weekend, and it's oh wow. uh, Its opening weekend domestically was eighty million, and right now, Mm -hmm. as of like Tuesday, I think it's up to basically a hundred million, which was their production budget. So. This is on par with other superhero movies in terms of being a financial hit so far. We don't we don't know what's going to happen week two, drop off wise. I think be. I said that I thought it was going to make less than two hundred. So yeah, that's it's, good. it's yeah. there. I mean, and again, that is a fucking surprise. Some people predicted as low as like fifty million wow. opening weekend. Yeah. So and especially with them reviews tearing it to fucking shreds. And right now, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, sit at eighty nine percent for the, for the uh, audience. For, for the audience, yeah, maybe. but what? the. The, the other one side is they're only 29. Yeah, the critics are 29%. Yeah. yeah. That's a huge discrepancy. Yeah. Huge. So, and I, I think I know, and you guys didn't see it quite no. yet. No. It's, it's fun in a lot of ways. I'm going to mm-hmm. start off by saying that. It, there is some decent action scenes, but the plot is fucking just run-of-the-mill kind of mediocre shit mm. and the um the guy the indian guy who's playing the uh the scientist basically he's playing elon musk <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking trash he's just awful in this like he, awful he acting has, or this is the way he's the character written everything about him just doesn't fucking work it, the, even that he's indian you racist motherfucker yes damn, everything man. about him <laughs> fuck him he's brown <laughs> god damn it um but yeah he just he doesn't fucking work now Hardy, when he's got the fucking parasite of fucking venom in him, those scenes fucking are either hilarious, uh, a little frightening, and just engaging. You're going to be on the fucking edge of your seat all those times. Mm. And that's the majority of the film. The other thing that this one does really well is it actually makes you give a fuck about Eddie Brock. Oh, which really? I, had, I mean, I love fucking Spider-Man and shit. I'd never really cared about Eddie Brock. Oh, man, I told you these. You got to read the Venom comics. The new ones that are coming, that are out now. They're so fucking. Anyway, it's out there. If you start with the what is it, the Venom First Night. Like, if you, you probably go before that. This is me, as far as I've read. Mm. I started reading a Venom First Night, and then just kept it going. And they've been fucking. Are fantastic. they all Brock? Or I thought they'd go uh, no. into other people. The first like one Flash. was uh, somebody. Might have been Flash Thompson. It was Flash Thompson. That okay. was a uh, first. First night or whatever, because he was in space. Yeah, and then it went to some other dude who was not good. Okay, but it was it was still readable. But and the Brock it, ones are good. Eddie Brock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the Eddie Brock ones are they're crazy because now they have ones where like they, they there's a story about the first host. Mm. So the first person that has like the actual Venom symbiote. Okay. Was uh I want to say it was Cree or some shit. Oh. But yeah, I guess pretty out in space though, not on Earth. Uh, well, he comes to Earth, but yeah, they, they show the backstory when he was in like some other planet. So okay. It's really interesting. I, I'm down to read some more, I guess, but you know, just historically, in the cartoons and a few comics back in the day, I had never really fucked with with Brock all that much. And he was, to be honest oh, with you, apparently you are racist because that guy was Pakistani. You fuck. Well, fuck him. <laughs> um, but hey, but, Pakistan is right next to India. it. Really, it's Asian. It really, it really <laughs> fucking South, people. South Asian. Um, but Brock is someone who, again, I, I just. You know, he was also very one-dimensional, if we're really honest, too. He hated fucking yeah, just, Peter Parker. That, I mean, that was it. That was it. And then he got the suit, got powers. And they both hated Spider-Man and Peter Parker, which was a great dynamic for the day. But this is also something that came out of, like, the mid-'80s, you know? Yeah, but they made him way more uh, way more layers now. Like, in the, the most recent comic, like, basically Venom has a, has a kid. Oh, okay. So it's like a symbiote. Like, they basically give birth to another Clint. I can't even say the fucking name of that goddamn species. Yeah. It's hard to say. So the, the, K, the symbiote species. The symbiote species. So that was interesting. And they all have different powers, so. Yeah. This one, basically, Elon Musk does a rocket ship. And he comes back, he goes on some fucking asteroid, 
the symbiotes are there. They pull them back down to Earth. Again, the plot is, is weak. There are plot holes. There just fucking are. Yeah. But it also feels a lot like, remember Blade? Oh, yeah. Blade was Blade, great. Blade 1 and 2, I'm sure. I haven't seen them in a while, but I'm sure they had fucking plot holes. I don't give a fuck. Blade but they were fun. blew my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah blood bath. Say. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Track. there's a level of fun to the Blade movies that I felt with this, with mm-hmm. fucking Tom Hardy and whatnot. The violence, you can tell there's a rated R version that they fucking cut out. Mm-hmm. You can just That's absolutely fucking that. tell, man. And th- there's no... and There's no true, blood? Tr- nah, there's no hardcore blood. But, but true to their word... There is no fucking Spider-Man, and that's going to be people's, you know, complaint. But I will fucking say this: Spider-Man would have changed things so drastically because he's a, a Venom is basically a, a true anti-hero that has no problem killing people. Yeah, and does kill plenty of fucking people. And if you put Spider-Man, Peter Parker, comic book accurate, and I, I get all that in there. Spider-Man's very, very much a good guy, mm-hmm. and he's going to stop the anti-hero or villain. And it, and and you push Eddie Brock and Venom way more towards the villain side with just Spider being there. Yeah, it. I mean, that would just naturally fucking happen. Now, what they could have done for a fucking remix is pick up the story with basically Spider-Man getting rid of the suit. Like, literally show him throwing it in the trash or some shit or being like, finally, that's over and swinging away. And then one way or another, Eddie gets it. That would have been a great twist that would have been satisfying to fucking comic readers for the last 40 years a little bit. But, like, isn't it the Eli Musk guy, the one that creates this? The he does not create art? it. He does not create it. He goes into space with his rockets and... Mine it, basically. F- mines it from an asteroid or finds it. Yeah. Finds this because there's more than one. But then that's the plot hole. Like, how would Spider-Man get it from that point? You, you there's, Like a yeah. flash forward, like there's, eight years later? There actually is some wiggle room for Spidey to possibly come, but I don't think they're smart enough to do it that way. I really don't. I think they're trying to make Venom the guy. Mm-hmm. You don't see a spider symbol on him, and he's not shooting any webs. But it, it, it's a it's different. Got, it's a monster. You know what it is? It's a monster movie version of Venom mm. that's separate from what you know about. He Venom. is basically a monster, though. Yeah. yeah. He, okay. One of the things that even Todd McFarlane, the co-creator of Venom, gave props to, and I appreciated this. He's big. He's like almost Hulk size, yeah. which is what he's kind of supposed to be from the comics. Yeah. In relation to Peter Parker's about 5'10", 5'11", or whatever, Venom towers over people. He towers over all normal human beings. Yeah. So I like his fucking size and girthiness. Yeah. Pause. You like, you like it deep in time? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Uh, so but- do you like this better than Homecoming? <sighs> Truth be told. I do like it. It's more fun than homecoming. It just is. I, I, you know, I got. Well, you, know, you know, we all know your stance on homecoming. Yeah, I mean, th- this had more fun with Tom. Tom Hardy fucking acts his ass off. They don't. I, I believe that uh, the, again. There's like 30, 40 minutes, mm-hmm. and he even admitted this that was cut from it. So there's some editing shit mm-hmm. that you probably get to see Tom even unleash way more. But I did like it slightly, not a whole lot yeah. more than fucking Homecoming. You know what? I know they're gonna fucking do this because they've done it for other movies. There, when they release a Blu-ray, it's gonna come out with all the cut scenes that were missing because they've done that with like, like with Suicide Squad and all the other different movies. Snyder cut bullshit. Yeah. The best one though was Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about I that. I never enjoyed a four-hour movie so much. Yes. <laughs> you know? The Twin Towers was all yeah. hell along on that yeah. extra, and same with the Return of the King. Yeah, I was just like, give more popcorn. It's Fat as fuck. <laughs> but the other thing with this one is there's no real competition in October. It's a perfect Halloween movie yeah. with no other real well, big Halloween movies to watch. Well, uh, literally, Halloween's coming out this week. Yeah, okay. But, <laughs> oh, the movie. But, uh, yeah, the movie Halloween. But, I mean, I could see this potentially winning a couple or coming in first or second place mm. in the next couple weeks. If the Halloween come, comes out this week, I'm pretty sure it's going to crush Venom. You couldn't see it be, even being second? Uh, it'll, it'll be second, yeah, but Halloween's mm-hmm. probably beating my life because uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is back. So. Oh, yeah, they brought her back, her old ass. I'm sorry, she's <laughs> old, but goddamn, she's she still keeps up. And her fucking boobs look so nice. Yeah. Still, it's that yogurt, what man. It helps fuck? her poop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, wait, uh, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh, no, y'all guys heard about that whole A Star is Born bullshit on Twitter, right? Yeah, go ahead, set it so, up. Um, some of, uh, so, Lady Gaga is the star in the movie oh. uh, Star is Born, yeah. and a lot of the, what they call like the the, the monsters stands. 
Yeah, oh. they're called lady. They're Gaga monsters, or whatever, or little monsters, or what the fuck they call. It. But uh, apparently, they were going around trying to get the review because Venom came out on the same day as A Star Is Born, so a bunch of the fans were trying to bring down the ratings of Venom, saying like, "Oh, it's a horrible movie. You need to go see A Star Is Born," so, something like that. So those are totally different audiences. Yeah, exactly. yeah totally, totally fucking, completely different. That's, that's like trying audience. to get a football fan to go watch fucking a, a, ba- a musical. <laughs> no, like a like a ballerina show or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. What do they call those things? Uh, play? No, or, like what ballerinas do? Like, yeah. Oh. What's the show called though? A ballet? A ballet. Yeah. Was, oh, damn. <laughs> what the fuck is it called? We, yeah. we would fail on a $10,000 pyramid or $100,000 pyramid. I'm not cultured, y'all. Right. <laughs> I, I was a Marine. I, you know, they trained me to kill people, not fucking watch <laughs> ballet rights and shit. <laughs> people par- prancing around. Yeah, man. That's prancing. That shit, yeah, di- way different fucking audiences. And it's also not a good look just movie-wise, you know, to diss something else. Like, stay in your own lane. I hope you do well for your fucking audience. Let Venom do well for its fucking audience. What the fuck? Yeah. You know? So, uh, per, um, A Star is Born. Uh, so, Venom made 80, 000, 80 million uh, this weekend, and then uh, Star is Born only made 40, so made about half that. True, but I will say this. Drastically different budgets, too. Oh, like, yeah. I'm sure A Star is Born has no fucking CGI or explosions or anything no. like that. So, it, it did well for its budget, and that's fucking fine. You know, good for Lady Gaga. I have no ill will towards her. Mm. The movie doesn't look like anything I want to fucking watch, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I don't really I don't really give a shit. I don't even know what it's about, but I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sing it. This is the time of year usually where you get a lot of like uh, Oscar bait movies. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Where it's like it's the sappy period piece bullshit and I you bet know. that movie will get an Oscar. Yeah, I mean who knows? Yeah, yeah. you're you're probably don't, at least you get a nomination. Or whatever, something yeah. like that. Well, I know this weekend everybody's up in arms about this movie with Ryan Gosling where he plays the first man like to go on the moon. Okay. Apparently there's like a lot of Oscar buzz for that. It's not even fucking out yet, but yeah. Sure. Again, that's just, this is that time yeah. of year where you, you're gonna have more of that. That's but, you know, shit. The fly, the fly Earthers should come out and boycott the. <laughs> yeah. all, all twenty of them. Yeah. Actually, there's way more than there should be of flat earthers. Yeah. They're just they're fucking so stupid. <laughs> they're fucking ridiculous. But I'm I'm just gonna say real quick with Venom. Uh, Michelle Williams surprised me. You end up, do, you do end up kind of liking her. Michelle Williams in there? Yeah, and their kind of relationship with with Eddie Brock. I, you know, it it kind of worked. I mean, again, not give, not going in with any expectations and not giving a shit about a whole lot. There weren't that many plot holes in quote unquote their relationship or whatever. So, I'm gonna give it drum roll, please. Seven point six. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's worth seeing if you just want popcorn action. You know, non-canon monster movie Halloween time fun. All right. You know what? You know what I noticed that I was expecting for you to say. What? It obviously, didn't bother you. It was not rated R, and you didn't comment that there was not enough violence. So that, that's a no, good sign. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It, he, he still kills people. I would have liked the additional blood, but I, I think that they're waiting to see if this movie does well and hoping that it can, one way or another, get more, do more Spidey movie, I Spidey mean, villain movies with them. Look, uh, Deadpool, they crushed it. They so. did. Same Blade movies, twenty yeah, years Blade ago, twenty fucking yeah. years ago with Blade movies. Yeah, stop being afraid to make a rated R comic book movie. Because to be honest with you, uh, Logan Venom, like most fans of Venom. Are in their 30s. Yeah. yeah. So we don't really give a shit about violence. The other thing is, the way the trailers are cut, most parents aren't going to take their young kids to see this. It's not like Iron Man. It's not like the Avengers. Yeah. You know, they're going to be on the fence. It looks scary. Yeah. It does. And so I'm even on the fence, even after seeing it, it's borderline for my eight and a half year old. Borderline. Uh. So just be aware of that fucking parents and shit. But what is it? We're seeing. We're fucking seeing. All right. What we getting So, at? so I'm going to give... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, Venom is PG-13. That's yeah, FYI. Yeah, yeah. True. Go ahead, man. So I'm going to give uh, a video game review. Uh-oh. Mm. And uh, this might be kind of controversial, but Ooh. I don't really give a fuck at this point because I think that the reviewers out there are feeding you a line of bullshit with this game. Oh, here we go. Uh, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, it's getting high praise. I watched the, uh, the review from IGN, mm-hmm. and I thought it was... Like, after I played the game, I thought it was total bullshit. Maybe it's just my PS4, but I fucking seriously doubt it. Uh, all right, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I had high hopes for this game. 
I thought it was going to be dope. But this gla- this game is literally the glitchiest game I have played on this generation. More than Mass Effect? More than Mass Effect. Ooh. I'm not fucking exaggerating. Mass Effect had problems, but they were not game-breaking problems. Damn. Like, literally, I, I, I'm going to bring up a video in a second here so you can literally see what the fuck I was going through with this fucking game. And it made me so fucking angry when I was playing it because the shit would just pause. Is there audio on this video? There is audio. I'll okay. talk through it so people can, like, really understand what the fuck I'm talking about. Are you going to share it? Yeah, yeah. I'll put it on the uh, on the screen. So, uh, if this is going to be part of the video, uh, it's obviously not going to be good for audio. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to show it. All right. Theater of the mind. So this is literally me when I was playing Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey. These are random glitches that I saw. So here we go. I'm just going to play. All right. So this right here is what I, the main problem that I have. See how I'm moving the camera around, but my player's not moving, my character's not moving at all. Your character's on stairs. I'm fucking stuck on a stair, and I can't fucking move. I pause the game, and the menu comes up, but it doesn't populate. Now it pop- populates, and I'm waiting for the rest of the game to catch back up. Damn. So if you give it a second, and, and then everything's fine. Don't okay, now I can me. move again. But then literally seconds later, it's going to cut. And I'm going to show you, like, literally, not even a minute later. You're frozen again. Now I'm frozen again. What the fuck? So, it? It's just a frozen Spartan it's in the world. Frozen. Everything's frozen. I can move the screen around. I can move the camera around, but I can't fucking move. That's all bad. And nothing else is moving. The the NPCs are screen. frozen, too? Yeah, everything's fucking frozen. God damn. You stuck in a matrix. Literally stuck. And it's, it gets like this, like, for minutes at a time. Like, five, you know, a minute to five minutes. Wasn't there a patch today? There was a patch, but I'll, we'll keep going through it. So, again, menus. They're gone. Take forever to load. Pause. They're not loading. Oh, not loading at all? Fuck. Yeah, not loading at all. God so I'm just dang. sitting here waiting for this shit to fucking catch up. And Damn. Let's, let's go to the next one. Uh, Those puddles look fucking frozen, too. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. I'll fast forward a little bit here. So this is a, a, a good dialogue. So this is the dialogue tree problem that I have, or just dialogue in general. This is a cutscene where it's supposed to be dialogue. If you look at it, the guy's moving around like he's supposed to be talking, but he's not talking. And then when he's talking right there, like, literally, they'll talk at the same exact fucking time. Uh, and I don't know what the fuck is going on. Did you switch your character's sex, or is it, was that always her? No, you could be a man or a woman, so I decided to be a chick. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. Even before that was a chick? Yeah. Uh, when yeah. you were stuck on the stairs? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Chick. She was just wearing, you know, armor. Big armor. Shirt. Okay. So, yeah, right here, same thing. It's stuck, and then... Right there. See how it's like they're moving around, but they're not actually talking? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it all catches back up, and I don't understand, like, any of the dialogue. Because they're step. talking over each other. Yeah. And, like, right there, there's no talking whatsoever. They're just moving their heads around and shit, and nothing's fucking happening. That's fucking weird. Yeah. And this is supposed to be a like fucking AAA game. Now, I'll fast forward, because I missed, in this section, I missed everything that he said. I have to make a choice. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it doesn't help at all. So Choose I'll wisely. Okay. Yeah, coin. Dialogue section. So this is a new one that, that kind of hit me uh, like a little while ago. So I'm trying to talk to this guy, but I can't fucking talk to him. I'm literally pressing triangle right now. I pull up my fucking hand. I'm pressing triangle. Nothing is fucking happening. And this oh, is... Damn. Uh, is this post patch? like a merchant or something? No, like this is to complete a mission. Oh, I'm t- trying to talk to a Spartan. And dude uh, fucking left too. He's like, yeah. oh, motherfucker ain't so like, talking to me. I'm out. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm showing you how the controller's on. People don't think I'm bullshitting. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to talk to this dude and it's not fucking working. Glitchy, glitchy shit. And then, shit. like, right after this, the same thing. Now the menu's gone again. Damn. So I'm going to pause it real quick. Literally, after this happened, uh, I tried, like, it, eventually it worked where I could talk to him, but it took, like, a couple of minutes. Yeah. And then I tried to call my horse, and my horse would never come. And then I look in the corner, and there's a fucking horse that's there, but it's, like, kind of nondescript. Mm-hmm. And then I walk up to it to, like, try to ride it, because you can ride any horse. Okay. And as I walk up to it, it fucking disappears. It disappears. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? So then I get to the road, and I see a horse, the same fucking horse, mm-hmm. with no textures on it. And I walk up to it. It's two feet off the ground. Oh, shit. I walk Damn. up to it. And then all of a sudden, it's on the ground. And then it transforms into my fucking horse. Oh, the, you're the <laughs> one that you were calling. Yeah, the one I was trying to call. So I'll fast forward a little bit. That's fucking to, funny, dude. <laughs> so right here, same thing. This is after the pack. This is after the pack. Oh, you frozen on your horse. Frozen on, on the horse. This what? is the, after the same thing. Actually, this is before the pack. Dude, I'm like, so. what, what are you guys looking at? <laughs> yeah, so let me find the one where it's like. He brought receipts. Yeah, so this is the one. This is post patch. All right, so this is frozen again, post-patch, because 1.3 came out today, and I was playing, and I hit the same fucking problem. Whoa, there's like a leaf or some shit flying. Yeah, yeah, this is like... Oh, yeah, like the leaf and stuff are moving, but you're not... See? I'm That's frozen. fucking weird. Totally frozen. Damn. And then see, I'm going to show you where it's fucking version 1.3. Yep. Oh, shit, the fucking... 
That messed up. Definitely. Yeah, see, 1.3 is installed. 1.03 is installed. And it's the same thing. Same frozen fucking bullshit. Damn, you brought your you brought your homework. Yeah, so yeah. people think I'm bullshitting about my complaints about Assassin's Creed. That's unplayable. Odyssey. Yeah, it's it's literally game breaking. Uh, let me go back to the main cam. And and Origins didn't have this bullshit. No, no, it didn't. Origins was great because they took the fucking time. Yeah. Like it, this is because before that it was Syndicate. Yep. Yeah. And Syndicate had problems too. And before that it was uh, Brotherhood, I think. London. Pirate one. Yeah. Syndicate was a London one, and that I, one was I, marred with. There was a London and a Paris back to back. But remember, for Origins, they took a year off. That was the thing for uh, in between. And that yeah. year off helped them. They needed a year off again for this one because it was, this is fucking, like the glitches that I showed you, they're fucking terrible. Yeah. They're literally game breaking and I have to put the game down. I can't fucking play it. Yeah. And there's parts of the game that are good and other parts of the game that are bad. So like when, when IGN gave it that 9.2 fucking score, look, even with the glitches alone, make it below a fucking eight for me. Because you can't fucking play the game. Yeah, that's right. All bad. If you take away the glitches, there are still problems with the game. Such as uh, one of the problems is. Uh, so I'm playing. I don't know if it's because I'm playing on hard mode. Um, I don't mind it being hard. That's that's perfectly fine. So I put it in hard mode. I did it to myself. Mm -hmm. But because it's on hard mode, I know that. And so what I'll try to do is I'll try to level up my character so they're higher than the than the um, enemies. No, well, then the enemies and also for the mission that I'm playing. Okay, yeah, that makes so sense. So in Assassin's Creed, when you play a mission, it's usually, it suggests your level, right? So yeah. it'd be like, say, level 12. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be higher than level 12, at least level 13 when I play that fucking level. Because sure. it's on hard mode. Makes sense. What this game does is if you... If you level up, it ups the level of oh, shit. The really? I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, so the, the minimum is always the minimum of what you are. Oh and man, like, what the fuck? And That's it, weird. And also, it's a um, it's an open world game, but not really. Oh. And I'll explain you right now. You can go wherever the fuck you want. Like okay. almost after like the first, after you get your your actual like your main boat. Yeah. Because you, you can get like an actual like ship like uh, Black Flag. Mm -hmm. Once you get that, that boat, you can go wherever the fuck you want. But areas are basically region locked by levels. And but, so what they did was... You can't go in them? No, you can go in them. Oh, okay. But if you fight an enemy, they're going to one-shot kill you. Damn. With anything. Yeah. Because like, literally, they're so hard. They're, they don't even tell you the fucking level. It just, it's just a red skull, <laughs> and they will fucking kill you easily. Damn. And they don't really let you know where the fuck they are sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's really fucking confusing when you go in an area, and all of a sudden, everybody's a fucking red skull. And like literally, the next region over will be everybody at your level. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? So you have to like, you, run to that region to get to the... You got to just run back to where the fuck you were. Fuck. Yeah. Because I was trying to explore, and I was just like, well, I can't go here because I can't find anybody. Yeah. You know, that that that's... that. But do you have missions in the in the red red zone or danger zone? No, you don't get those until, like, I guess later on, but it's okay. just like... I, it's just... It's it sounds like that that part from the from Destiny 1 where there's, like, a scene where there's a level... Or in the open world, there's, like, a part where you go underground, and if you go underground and you're, like, level yes. 10 or something, you go down there and everything in there is, like, level 50, and they just kick your ass. That was, like, that was in the beta. Yeah. And the alpha, too. So, yeah. That, uh, that kind of pissed me off. And there was something else, too, that I, I really didn't like. Um, but... Things that are good. Uh, okay, so these are things that are good about the game. So I don't want to just trash the game. All right, there are things that are fucking awesome. Uh, it's great that you're a Spartan. Uh, the Spartan kick is fucking excellent in the game. Like 300, right? Yeah, especially because, like, if you're playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey right now and you're getting your ass kicked, this is all you got to do. This is how you beat anybody. Mm. All right, upgrade the Spartan. Actually, you don't even upgrade the Spartan kick. Just have the Spartan kick, and if somebody's fucking you up, you know they're going to fuck you up. Just run up any fucking cliff, run up a fucking building, whatever yeah. you can do. Have them chase you up that motherfucker. And then just spark kick them off. Let gravity do the rest. God damn. And they will fucking die. <laughs> like, they will fucking die. How's the climbing? Uh, climbing's great. It's easy. It's just press, okay. press X and you go up. Good. Um, other things that are good about the game uh, the new inventory system is. is it's good and bad. Uh, what's good about it is that you can now upgrade basically any of your weapons and armor. So if you have, like, say, one weapon that you really, really like, mm -hmm. uh, you can upgrade it to, to your current level at all times. Oh, so yeah. Origins did not have that. There was a yeah. there was a cap on each le a weapon in, no. in Origins. And this one, there doesn't seem to be that way okay. thus far. Okay. And you can also engrave your weapons to, like, yeah. add in additional... Um, like attributes, nice. Like however you want to play, say you like runes have, or something. Yeah, say you want to have flame damage, you can upgrade it to have flame damage or poison damage or whatever. Like that's cool. And, so, and even even after you engrave it once, 
if you engrave it once and you don't like the, the way it works, mm-hmm. you can engrave it again and changes the fucking attributes. So that's good shit. That's really cool. Um, good loot. Another thing that's really cool is like the whole conquest system. So basically, when you're in a region now in the game, you have to basically take down uh, lieutenants and captains, basically the leaders of that faction. Yeah. Uh, by taking out the faction leaders, uh, depleting their resources, or just sabotaging resources. And then when you do that, you can challenge that region uh, to like this fucking crazy ass battle. Do it's you like get literally a war? Do you get to pick up allies as you go to help help out? Yes, okay. that that goes back to your boat. Okay, which is really I'll get to, get to that in a second. So uh, as you're doing like this big ass war battle, it's like a, this huge battlefield where like all your people are like just fighting on this fucking battlefield hmm. uh, for uh, re- for for that region. If you okay. lose, you lose the region. If you if you win, you win the region. And you can pick two Fair. sides. Either you're gonna be on the Spartans or on the Athenian sides. Ah. But one thing that kind of sucks though is that I always want to be on the Spartan sides, but there's parts of the like the story where you're not gonna like you're playing both sides, and I don't really like that. I think that's kind of poorly written. Is your Wonder Woman character a Spartan? She is a Spartan. Yes. Okay. Well, she comes from Spartan descent. Okay. But she grew up in Athens. So she got okay. Both. I don't want right. to get the story, but some shit happened in Spartan, and she ends up being in Athens. Okay, or in Greece. Sorry, she ends up being in Greece, one of the Greek Isles. So that shit's cool. Um, the when you're on a boat, you have like a crew, and uh, remember how in Assassin's Creed, like all the Assassin's Creed, I have like the the captains and lieutenants, like the, yeah. gold, the gold characters. Yeah, the ranking. So you have a choice in this game now, where you can either kill them or. Uh, incapacitate them mm-hmm. and then have them join your crew. Oh, that's a nice feature. So they end up being lieutenants on your crew. And along with them joining your crew, they have attributes. If you put them on like the actual lieutenant spots, yeah. uh, it changes the attributes of what your crew does. That's like cool. if they can attack more or defend more or something like that. And when you go into battle, they can help you out in battles too. So I thought that was a really cool system as well. Are you a fucking assassin in this game at all? It sounds like you're a, a general of Spartan armies. Yeah, I don't. This <laughs> so far they haven't really even mentioned assassins or Templars. Oh wow! Okay, and I heard that they might not in the game total, the which is kind of weird. I'm not complaining because it just. I mean, if you're a Spartan, you're not really an assassin, right? I wouldn't. Th- I would think not, unless it's they tell. I mean, it's alternative history. Yeah, you know what I mean. So they can go anywhere they want to fucking go. But from what you're describing, I'm not hearing any assassin shit. Well, you're basically you're a fucking mercenary, is what you really are. Okay. So you're not really an assassin. Mm. So people are gonna, probably going to complain about that, but it still plays like an Assassin's Creed game, and there's still like there's still like a cult they have to fight against. But it's okay. not the Templars, thus far as far as I've seen, um, and you're definitely not an assassin. Any. Um, Easter eggs alluding to origins at all, or Bayek at all, or uh, no, not really. I mean, they, they make some references to assassins, like kind of in a joking way, because like someone will ask you to kill someone, like I'm not an assassin. That's like oh one wow, option. Well, that's kind of on the and nose. Like, all right, but I'll kill him too. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's just like because you're, you're a mercenary. You, you you know you do that shit for money, even though you can choose not to do it for money. But okay. Um, yeah, I think they just it should have probably stayed in the cooker for for longer. It should have stayed in development for for longer to get those bugs out because those, those bugs are. I mean, you guys saw them; they're fucked up. If they, I know they've already had a patch today. If they give you uh, maybe two or three rounds of patches over the next two weeks, would that help improve? or Are you done? Well, I mean, it would improve, but I mean, it's not going to improve my score at this point. Look, you can't. It's just like when No Man's Sky came out. Um, no Man's Sky, when it came out, it, No Man's Sky, to its credit, it wasn't buggy. It was just a shit game. And they lied about yeah, some and they features. Lied, but they fixed it later on. But it, they still didn't. It didn't change my my original score. Mm. And that's even now Assassin's Creed. I can give you a score now, and it's not going to be good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I'm not going to recommend this game to anybody. At this there point. it is. With Ugh. the fucking that's with this, this amount of glitches that I've seen personally that I've shown you. I cannot possibly recommend this fucking game. It's so fucking frustrating. I remember, and what's funny about what you're saying, don't get me wrong, I've seen your proof, you got the receipts, it's true. I haven't seen the amount of, like, viral hatred online that you would think. And Assassin's Creed is not new to this, because on their London or fucking Paris one, you saw the floating eyeball scenes and all of that. People shit on that game before it even released, and the reputation of the franchise went down because of the glitches. Well, that's the problem. Is like, am I... Am I like one of the very few? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna release my glitch video 
uh, probably in the next couple days because nobody's releasing them. Wow. And I'm like, and I cannot, there's no possible way I'm the only one. And I remember somebody said that he had problems too. And then somebody had asked, somebody said, oh, it's your hard drive that's failing. No, you stupid fuck. That's not how technology works. <laughs> when you are fucking playing a video game, you're not playing it off your fucking hard drive, you fucking moron. It gets loaded into your RAM. You cannot possibly play a video game off of a fucking slow ass hard drive. They have to load all that shit in the RAM because it's way goddamn faster. Well, how about the fact that you've been playing a whole bunch of other games? Yeah, and there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like the only outlier is this game. Yeah. You didn't have any problems with Spidey or Last, Last of Us or oh, this fucking whole stack. God of War. God of War. Yeah, you know. Yeah, th- those are fine. Those weren't glitchy. <laughs> they're on the same hard drive. They're, and it's on an external hard drive. Exactly. Like, the external hard drive loads to my fucking RAM. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean. So people out there, oh, it's your hard drive. It's not your fucking hard drive. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. And it. again, it's not just you because I've even based on your feedback, I looked and I was like, yeah, I'm curious because I like Assassin's Creed games. Yeah. Let me look up who else is having glitches. Surprise, surprise. There's plenty of people out there but, but, but it's but not going viral yes and there's no there's no kind of outrage about it i'm just yeah. like dude you, especially because these reviewers like so the ig interview they talked about some of the glitches but they just like glossed over it i'm like mm. dude the, like, what you cannot gloss over these goddamn glitches and then give it a 9.2 so I, obviously we hate conspiracies and shit on here but just to speculate a little bit, why do you fucking think that a game that out of the box has these problems that you fucking cited here with your goddamn receipts is getting not just from IGN, but across Metacritic, a lot of high eights, low nines? Why is that? Because I, I think so there's other things in the game that are good. Okay. They but, overshadow it? No. In my opinion, no. <laughs> like, if you can't do basic gameplay, like as I fucking showed, then the game is fucking trash. Yeah. Like, don't get, you can have all the fucking cool features that you want. Like, if you had a car that could go, I don't know, 200 miles per hour 30% of the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? But 70% of the time, you can only go 25. It's Roll like, them dice! Yeah, it's like, come on, man. Like, that's, that's bullshit. Yeah. You know? So I, I got to hear it. So if, if you stopped right now and or, or it made you stop <laughs> and stalled out, what, you giving it a six? What, what, what are you giving it? I'd give it a solid six. Damn. Yeah. That's a, low a as fuck. And, and, that's, and it's sad because I see the potential there. That's what I think it is, is that people that are playing this game, they see the potential mm. and they give it the score on the potential. But I'm giving you the score on when I'm fucking playing. This yeah. ain't fucking potential. This is what I'm fucking playing. What's stalling out on you. Yeah. You know? Like, if I can't play a game, it's, it's not even a fucking game at that point. It's fucking sad. It's bullshit. Man. And, I mean, you know, in this day, in 2018, there's just no excuse to even, like, release for retail and yeah. digital something that's not going to work, you know? It's like... And it's a big game. This is the fall of 2018. There's big titles for the rest of the year. Ubisoft was kind of on a roll with their, with their games. I mean, they released... Uh, the latest Far Cry came out this year. Yep, Far Cry Five. No glitches. Yep. Uh, Watch Dogs Two came out this year. Or la- a couple year years or last ago. Year? Yeah, I think it was last year. Seventeen or sixteen, one of them. No glitches. Or very few. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Origins was ran well. Yeah, and they decided to just you know toss this one, toss this one out there, and I'm just like. And there's like a lot of shit to do in the game, but it's yeah. even Wildlands. I didn't hear about any glitches. That was Ubisoft yeah, too. Yeah. Um, I didn't hear about any for South Park. You know, they just want to push this shit out. This piece of fucking garbage out. It's a it's a big franchise, but you can't do this shit, man. No. I'm, I'm fucking. I'm I'm right there with you. And I was about, I was on the fence. I was probably waiting for like a, a Black Friday sale. You know, but there's too much to play right now to be waiting on bullshit. <laughs> Wait, game load. I'll let you know when the game loads right. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. All right. Uh, sh- actually, why don't we take a quick little breaky break? Yeah, hold on. Mm. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the goddamn spot. You gotta, write, you gotta give me a. Key. I know we have the worst fucking, uh, you know, Cut crossover. Into, yeah, the, yeah. Well, since I just talked about games, I guess we we can do the game yeah, one, right? It. So let's do it. Actually, this game, if, if you don't believe me, <laughs> all right, if y'all, perfect. Y'all, uh, Reason. Chronos don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's a fucking liar. You, this is a perfect example of what you can do. You can go to Gamefly. Mm. All right, Gamefly, where you can rent games. Uh, it's this is great for games like this, games like No Man's Sky. Actually, any game out there, yep. it's excellent because what you can do is it's it's a game rental service where you pay a monthly fee, and uh, what they do is they send you make a list of games, like say Assassin's Creed, Last of Us, Spider Man, whatever, and you get one of the games in. I think you can do up to like two games yep. at the same time. And they see you in the game. When you're done, you send it back, and they see you in the next one that's on your list. Um, if you like the game, you can buy the used copy, nice. and they'll send you the box. So, which is great if you like it, or if you don't like it, like immediately. Like if, if, if this has been great because if I had 
uh, Gamefly OS in Odyssey back right yep. away. I'd have been like, this is glitchy, goodbye. Fuck so it. this is why you should definitely use this service for any video games out there, is to, to kind of like know what you want and know that it works right and know that you'll actually like the game instead of being stuck with a $60 game that is garbage. Plus right. they got movies. Yes, they do have movies. Um, they have uh, over 8,000 new used games uh, on pretty much any new and old console. Yep. So... Uh, other games that are coming out uh, soon this year is Fallout 76 is coming out, which is probably great, uh, great game for Gamefly. Yep, comes yep. out on uh, was it November 14th. Mm-hmm. The beta comes out pretty soon, but the beta is only if you pre-order it. So just Gamefly it if you don't want to pre-order it. There you go. Don't want to don't want to roll the dice because to be honest with you, I mean I pre-ordered it, but I don't know how good the game is going to be. I don't know how well uh, an MMO RPG is going to be on a game where you're supposed to be in a wasteland with not a lot of people. There you go. So, that, everybody has those. Questions. Questions. Yeah, so um, Dabble 3, the Eternal Collection, is coming out for the Switch uh, in November as well. Uh, a new... Well, actually, no, the old Spyro. Wow, that's getting released too. They're re-releasing Spyro, the trilogy. Wow, that's old school. That's amazing. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider came out earlier this year. Uh, same with Spider-Man's an excellent game. Uh, uh, anybody should go play that if you have a PS4. It's an exclusive. Um... For sports games, I don't play too many sports games anymore. Uh, NBA, what, 2K19 mm-hmm. came out a little while ago, and I think what Madden comes... What did Madden come out? Madden came out in August. Really? Yeah. But there was another one that came out that's... Oh, I'm thinking of uh, WWE. Yeah. And that, FIFA. Yeah, that all those. FIFA, yeah. all that stuff. So, yeah, if you go to uh, GameflyAlfred.com forward slash BTI, you will get a month of subscription service on us. That's right. It is free. Nice. And even if you don't got a console, they can stream to your Samsung TV, your LG TV, your Fire Stick... Uh, uh, it's pretty great. The streaming games is probably the future. Yes. So, um, once again, that is GameFlyOffer.com forward slash be then BTI to your first month of subscription service on us. That's right. You get a free game on us for a month. So You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, we got to talk about something, man. The fucking... Uh, I, uh, powers that be at Netflix obviously listen to this show. They know that we're n- we know what the fuck we're talking about. We got angry. We ranted about it. They heard us. We won internet. <laughs> what am I talking about? The Witcher. Yes. Witcher. Siri, especially. Siri and Yennefer the have been cast. Um, and unlike the rumor mill that was going crazy a few months back, or a few weeks back, rather, uh, where they were saying that they were possibly going to cast uh, a person of color, maybe Asian, maybe black, maybe Latina, um, in the role of... Maybe a- no. How about yeah. no spot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the internet didn't like it, and especially people, nerds well, in Poland, hated some it. Some the internet didn't like it, but the SJWs are pushing yeah. for it. I'm like, dude, I no. Know. I, I, you, know what, you know what made me fucking really angry? Is that I saw uh, African Americans mm-hmm. pushing for an African American uh, person to be Siri, and they were saying they were trying to like backpedal and like do this tap dance about, oh well, she's not racially significant; she doesn't need to be white. Jesus I'm like, Christ. she's based upon Polish folklore. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? They're like, but it's not important. I'm like, yes, it is. Goddamn! It's like, look, if you if you made say a movie with a uh, raw or a Nancy or some other fucking African god, yep, and they had to be white, you'd be fucking outraged. Gods of Egypt, y'all yeah. were mad. Yeah, but yeah, they want to pretend like. They want to pretend like uh, the cultural significance on anything black is more important than anything white, and that is fucking disgusting. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to also say, uh, again, repeating this, all of them had never talked to a Polish fan. Because yeah. a Polish geek of The Witcher is going to sit your dumb ass down and be like, no, let me tell you about how the fact that there's no Slavic heroes that make it in the West for the most part besides The Witcher. Yeah. This is important to us. I mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. Literally, when uh, two or three years ago, when President Obama Obama went to Poland, he got a gift of The Witcher 3. You're never going to see that with any <laughs> yeah. fucking other country giving a video game to a president yeah. as a here's a symbol of our country. Here's a video game. That's how fucking important it is to these people. They just want to trash that shit over some fucking stupid <laughs> racial bullshit that should not exist to begin with. Yeah, It really shouldn't. Like, people are just... Uh, I feel like we're living in this fucking weird era where people get outraged over shit that is a not important, and then b that's like totally invalid. Right? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like if we if we just thought about people as humans, like humans, <laughs> yeah, we'd be like much better off. But just just understand that there are things that are culturally significant to other to cultures, and you need to respect that. Yeah. And when you don't respect that because your skin happens to be different color than theirs, you're fucking retarded, yeah. and you're a racist. Yeah, and. 
I think a lot of people jumped in that have never played the games or read any of the books, yeah. too. And I'm just like, if you played these games at least, and I haven't read the books all, all the way. I, I got one audio book. I didn't even finish it. But playing just Witcher 3, I was like, wow, this is impressive. I don't know anything about this cultural stuff. I learned a little bit about it. I've talked to some Polish geeks online. They've all been really welcoming. Like, hey, I'm a, a black guy in America who is impressed with this game and these characters. Tell me a little bit more. You know, that's it, that's what it's all fucking about. Yeah, it's, you know, that's the thing is that, that, that's how we get. Like, that's actual diversity. Like, people want. This is one of the first panels that we made was really understanding true diversity, and this is what it comes down to. It is not about. Um, skin tone all the time. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people like to, they like to leave out any kind of pale skin person from diversity when they don't understand that there's a lot of uh, diversity, like cultural diversity, in, you know, people that are Caucasian. Yeah. Because, like, somebody from Poland is going to have a vastly different cultural reference than somebody from England. Yes. And I think that people don't, they don't, they don't care about it anymore. No. I think that's fucking important. Yep. You know what I mean? It's just it's just like understanding that an African American has a way different cultural experience than an actual African. Yeah, or Jamaican. Yes, and you don't understand that until you fucking travel the until you travel. Yeah. So my advice to you, anybody that has these stupid ass thoughts, is just go fucking travel the world. Like please. Yeah. Like see how different cultures are and respect them. Even if you can't afford the traveling, the internet gives you access to a lot of different people mm-hmm. to interact with or go to a, a fucking ethnic restaurant right if you have one in your area it's true but i think the best way for i'm just always gonna go back to this if you can do it if it's sure financially feasible for you travel yeah to somewhere that you might not be comfortable with traveling to yep. so it's fun i mean don't, I, I've traveled don't buy to, those new jordans that's <laughs> yeah just save up get a new ticket get a plane ticket go yeah, somewhere just, just travel like right now Greece is fucking cheap as shit to go to. There you go. You know what I mean? Travel to there. If you want to, you want to do something on a budget, go to fucking Greece. Smart and kick them. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I mean, they're, they're in a financial downfall. You can help them out. So there you go. Uh, but there's other places too that you can go. If you want to see some brown people, go to fucking uh, different parts of Africa. Yep. It's cheap as fuck to go there right now. Go to Ethiopia. Addis Ababa is what I recommend. Uh, if people want to talk about Africa and African nations, look. Ethiopia has never been conquered. Most people don't fucking know that. Yep. Like I'm pretty sure that when they when they you know they made up Wakanda, part of that's probably based oh, off of certain. Ethiopia. For certain. And like most folks don't really understand that. And Ethiopia is fucking excellent. Uh, I know that uh, Ethiopians get a lot of shit in America for some reason for like being skinny and shit. I can tell you from being there. If you're a single man, or if you're a single lesbian woman, uh, <laughs> go to Ethiopia. They're, the chicks there are hot as fuck. They're basically yeah. a bunch of Beyonce's running around. Mm-hmm. I'm not even fucking bullshitting you. And it's you it's go. a cool ass country. There you go. Uh, I, anyway, I, I, I'm very happy, very happy that The Witcher has done their cast. Why don't we show uh, the people watching a little bit live what uh, who's going to be playing Siri, who's going to be playing Yennefer? Yeah, yeah. Pull those. Uh, I can't remember the ladies' names, the actresses' names. Uh, I, I, I feel good about this. I feel good about Henry Cavill. I'm excited all the way around. I'm hoping that it's going to be a, a huge success for Netflix. Maybe even their Game of Thrones. We'll fucking see. Oh, wow. No trailers yet. This but Really good. Okay. Hello. <clears throat> so a good picture of yeah. So. yeah. So this is a side-by-side. Side. What are their names again? Uh, do we know? I do not know. Yeah, yeah. So here... Nope, 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 nope. This is hot off the presses today. But anyway, open image in new tab. God damn. All right, but right, that, so that was cool shit. The so it's Faya Allen and Anya, I can't pronounce the last name. Okay, so on the left, imagine her with white hair. That will be Siri. <laughs> yep, she's gonna have white hair, right? Yeah. yeah, of course. And on the right, that will be Jennifer. There we go. There we go. And she's supposed to be pale as fuck. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the problems that I had when someone was like, "Oh yeah, she could be black." No, she couldn't. No, no. It's like having it's like having uh, Geralt being black. It's yeah. Like, no. And if you want a great new story with black characters in it that has some folklore and all that, make it. Yeah, I, I, definitely. I, I will yeah. probably support you if it's good, you know. But this one is established and been made, and it's actually an older story. So get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, I'm all about making new stories. Like, yeah. not, like the, I think this the cheapest thing you can do, at least to me, to like really cop out on diversity is just. Ethnic swapping a character. Yeah, that, that's not diverse. Lazy, Get the fuck out lazy of here. Shit. Actually, I gotta give one uh, piece of props. Um, Task 
from Super Suit Show has his own fucking comic on Kickstarter that's starting, and it looks fucking interesting. What's I it will, called? Of course, I don't have the fucking name. Is this like, the Scorpio thing we kept getting emails about? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. It's Scorpio number I one. I think it's something about free the world, something. Oh, okay. I don't think it's that, but I will get the name and I will I will put it out there. But good Wait, luck to him. So who the, who is John Robinson? John, I don't know him. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> yeah. You're looking at an email. Well, it's an email it's to us. Sorry. Yeah, I don't. Maybe to we, we go. We go to a lot of cons. Right. It could have been anybody. Right. I don't know. But anyway, shout out to him from uh, from Super Suit Show. I, I do want to support, and hopefully that uh, that comic's pretty good. Why don't we have more tasks? I'll can you email more. us the goddamn information, please. Yeah, because I can get it from Twitter. While all right, because Prodigy's old, old and tripping. Yeah, so <laughs> saying exactly. I'll get this shit from Twitter. Don't you fucking worry. We, about we support it. our. Fellow podcasters, like uh, pre-recorded live, uh, who I don't talk about enough on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm catching up on the podcast on their podcast, and they changed their format. And I'm, to me, it's for the better. Like I'm really loving the new format where they just basically pull, bullshitting for you know an hour, basically an hour. And it's been uh, it's been really good. So if y'all have not listened to pre-recorded live, uh, a few of us, almost all of us, have been on the podcast. Yep. At some point in time, and Prodigy was the latest one talking about uh, kinks. That was a fun one. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a really good one. So uh, if you guys get a chance, definitely check out uh, pre-recorded live with uh, Matt, Joe, and Becky. Yeah, and, and they've been on our podcast a few times too. We did like that huge crossover episode where we had um, we had pre-recorded live and another. Group was it uh, something something guys? Yeah, something yeah. something cast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We all and we always fuck with Daniel and Gian. I have uh, the name of it. So it's the leaders of the free world. Okay. And it's you can find it on Kickstarter. Uh, shout out to Task. And I don't know who the actual artist is, but he's done some of the writing on there. Good luck to them. And I'm I'm probably gonna support. You know what I mean? Because why the fuck not? Here's what we got to get into. God damn it! It's time. Mother fucking goblins. Oh, yes. Mm. I'm so surprised that I watched this before you did. So I'm glad I did. I I was like, I was first. (laughs) (laughs) I heard about it. Folks were telling me, but I wanted to. I I knew they they mentioned Berserk, and I was like, I can't do this in front of the kids. (laughs) I waited until they were well in bed. Oh, yeah, because it's like it starts off so tame, Mm. and then it gets gets fucking dark so fast. (laughs) What do we talk about? We're talking about Goblin Slayer. Only one episode is out on Crunchyroll. This this is a motherfucker. Uh, Blue, did you check this one out as well? No, yet? I thought of, I thought it was a Netflix show. Oh Ooh. no, Blue, damn! This oh, is anime, yeah. my friend. It's on Crunchyroll, and uh, it's dark, but I I feel like <laughs> it should be unedited. Yep. I feel like they edited some parts in there. You know, like sure. I was like, you could probably take some clothing away. Mm-hmm. But yep. at the same time, it's like those are really uncomfortable moments for me to watch. So yeah. Yeah, and they should be. They, yeah. they, they yeah. definitely should be if you're not a psychopath. Completely. So we're talking about goblin rape. Yeah, if, exactly. Uh, we're, that's what I was alluding to. I'm sorry if uh, I was too elusive about it because it's hard to talk about. But yeah, it's a explicit so- show. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's pretty fucked up. But at the same time, there there's a a twisted sense of like perverted justice because these motherfucking noobs on this show completely said, "Ah, oh, we got four of us. We don't need we don't need to worry." about anything. We're going to wipe the floor with these goblins. They ain't shit. We're going to go into their home and fucking murder the shit out of them. And them goblins was like, nope. This is the best part. <laughs> All right. So in the very beginning, this, so the, I forget the chick's name, like the semi main character. She's a healer, right? Yes. And she teams up with like this total noob group. Mm-hmm. And she's a noob as well. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, meet up with, with, with us. We don't have a priestess, which is a healer. And she's like, you know, what What can you do? And she's like, oh, you know, I can heal, but only three times. Yep. I'm like, there's four people in your group. <laughs> so That's if you get problem. fucked over, uh, one of you guys fucking die. Yep. Right? And no other healers. At, at least one of you is going to die. Exactly. Yeah. So it went all bad. Dude brought a very long sword into a shallow, short cave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another dumb decision. Another real dumb decision. Yeah, it was. On top of out loud saying multiple times, goblins ain't shit, including in the goblins' own fucking dungeon. Goblins listening and like, okay, motherfucker, I see you. <laughs> we gonna see about what you was talking, you know, oh, yeah. in just a few minutes. And there's fucking uh, signs on the fucking outside of the cave. And inside the cave, oh, yeah. said basically skull and crossbones, like uh, Kronos was talking about for Assassin's Creed, letting you know this is too high of a level for your ass. Oh yeah, stay the fuck out of here. They're like, nah, this ain't shit. We gonna we we know how to fucking kill goblins. Okay, yeah, we gonna see. Woo. 
Them were some rapey ass goblins, though. <laughs> them like, oh, goblins shit. came up from behind and just destroyed each and every one of them. I mean, basically. they killed some of them. Yes. Like the dude was go- dude is dead. Oh, the dude is definitely dead. But yeah. the dude, he killed some goblins. He got a couple, yeah. And then he figured out that his sword was too long. <laughs> Even though he figured it out when it was in the cave. Yep. I was like, bro. Hit the ceiling again. Yeah. When it was cru- when it was crunch time, yeah. he hit the fucking ceiling with his sword. Yeah. And he got beat to death. He, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no mercy. And then the chick, <laughs> like the other brawler that was in the group, she decided to come through and like start kicking ass. She got some of them too. And then she got brutally raped. Yep. Brutally raped. <laughs> I was like, dude. But the hobgoblin got caught. The hobgoblin is a big one. Caught her fucking kick in midair. Was yeah. like, oh, you done fucked up, bitch. You know, mm-hmm. you come in my house kicking people. Oh, it's yeah. on. Shit. Yeah, man. I'm gonna kick you with this dick. How about that? <laughs> and you know, the goblins. They. <laughs> you could see them. It's not funny, but it's graphic. You could see them fucking put their nails into that ass yeah. and squeeze down, drawing blood yeah. while they start going to fucking town on them. And they've ripped all the clothes off of the girls, and it's it's party time up in the goblin hood. So, yeah. yeah. That episode was fucked up. Yeah, it, it was fucked up. Oh, and can, it, can we give, like, okay. Go ahead. So after the raping, so the healer was trying to heal people. <laughs> Because this is the part that we kind of forgot to, to, to put in this part. But uh, as they're going in, two of them decided to just like split off and just like leave. Dumb shit. And I was just like, what the <laughs> fuck? What, what are you doing? Yeah. So those are the ones that get fucked up first. It, actually, no. One of the ones that was behind with the healer, she gets fucked up first. Yep. And then the dude gets fucking stabbed and bashed to death. Mm-hmm. Then the hobgoblin fucks up the chick that was like the fighter. Yep. Rapes her. And then takes her away, and then the goblins are coming after the healer chick, and that's when the motherfucking goblin slayer comes. Yes, that motherfucker, badass. Yeah, badass personified. He is the Punisher meets Guts from Berserk. Yeah, and yeah. he's all about fucking slaying goblins. He and he's been doing it for a long. He been has been slaying goblins. Yeah, he's like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. You don't Damn. see me coming in here with a fucking long sword and shit. Yeah, I got the appropriate tools to kill goblins. So yeah. I'm watching one of the, the rape scene you guys were just talking about, and they have her fucking face down, ass up. Yep. Yeah. Toot yeah. that ass up is what them goblins <laughs> was saying. <laughs> yeah. All bad. God damn. Yeah. And, and oh, real quick, before I think before just before the um the goblin slayer comes in, the healer, she knows what's going on. She's seen murders. She's seen the raping of the goblins. She fucking pisses herself. The oh. goblins smell the piss, laugh at her like, bitch, it's on. And they're like, oh, you next. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, Man. Oh, like piss. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn. I was like, oh, here we go. Goblin Slayer is badass, though, man. Yeah, Goblin Slayer. I think he killed like maybe nineteen. Go- he was counting them. Yeah, he was counting he was them like Lord of the Rings style. Yeah, <laughs> every single goblin or goblin that he killed was just, just counting them. And he's like an exterminator with it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. He he really is. They're, they're like vermin to him. And I appreciate that aspect of it. He's got full suit of armor. You don't see his face. Yeah. You know, he's got a torch. He's got, you know, some short knives that are appropriate for a cave and a club later yeah. on. What, what I really liked about it is that he came in the cave cave alone. Yes. He didn't give a single fuck. Met up with the, with the priestess chick. This is a priestess, right? That's what her name Someone. Is? He, yeah. Priestess healer, yeah. Uh, was like, hey, you know, what can you do? <laughs> she named off what she can do and how many times. She's like... Basically, did the calculations in his head, quick as fuck. Yep. Like, all right, let's go. Keep going in. Yeah. And then used her, like her, whatever ability she had left, to fucking basically better murder these fucking goblins. Yes. And kill goblin babies. Yes. Like without Ooh, mercy. Yeah. We we got to <laughs> talk about that. Give a fuck. He was like, well, there's babies, goblin babies, but they're gonna grow up to be other goblins. They're gonna hate humans, so might as well just kill them now. Yeah. It's something about like they learn. Through um, the, it get, the memories get passed down, hereditary yeah. style or whatever, and, and so and they'll hold a grudge. Now, there'd be like more than fifty of them, and they'd yep. kill everybody. He's like, "We'll just kill them now." Yep. So he just kills goblin babies. And the healer was kind of like, "What the fuck are you doing? These are babies, <laughs> yeah. you know." And, and he was looking at her like, "Bitch, Bitch I kill yeah. goblins." Yeah, it's like, and they was about to rape your pissing ass. Yeah, yeah. give me that club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear it. You hear the fucking. 
<laughs> you know, that fucking sound that he's gra- bashing the skulls in, man. It's hardcore. Dude, what's so crazy about it? This is only one fucking episode. I know. <laughs> Y'all got to go in on one Dude, fucking really episode. Good. It's not a whole entire season. It's one episode. It, it was so good. 23 good. minutes. You know what it, it felt like, too? I mean, Crunchyroll, we, we talk a lot about them. They have a lot of great content. There's not a lot of super dark stuff on yeah, there. There's yeah. a lot of slice of life. There's a lot of etchy stuff, a lot of fun comedy, mm-hmm. and some action. But this is dark, twisted shit. Well, I, so I'm not going to put that solely on Crunchyroll. I think it's just Japanese culture in general. They don't put out too much dark content. Sure. As far as, like, anime goes. Mm-hmm. Except for, like, hentai and shit, you know? But that's not Crunchyroll's, you know, forte. No. But at the same time, like, the last really dark... Excuse me. Anime that I saw was probably Terraform Mars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that went hard. That one was, like... So Super fucking season hard. one, yeah, yeah, yeah season yeah. one. Don't watch season two. Just don't. Uh, season one was so fucking fucked up. Yeah, it, the roaches. Yeah, <laughs> they, I was so disappointed in season two, man. I want, I want to jump off a cliff, man. Nobody ever talks about season two. Like, no. people have erased that shit from their minds. I watched like the first fifteen minutes. I was like, no, yeah, this not is not happen. terraform ours. But yeah, the, and, and here's the other thing too. Punk ass motherfuckers got in their feelings, and I'm like, here's the thing. If this isn't your type of anime, don't fucking watch it. Yeah. Nobody has a goddamn gun to your head. It's not real. You know? Yeah, that's <laughs> what... And goblins are going to do some foul shit sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, you went into their home. I, you know, I could see the goblins did rape. Which, hey, goblin raping is bad. I could see going into a goblin home and, mur- and murdering babies and whatnot as... Also not really good, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, not really good. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot going on, and it's only one episode in. You, we don't even know what the long-term tone of this show is going to be. All I know yeah. is that the healer chick hooked up with the goblin slayer at the end, and he was like, she was like, all right, I got what you wanted. But, you know what you got? The armor at the end. Yeah, chainmail. She might have got chainmail underwear. Yeah, exactly. I was like, bitch. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess you won't get raped. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Maybe. Maybe. I, mean, yeah, I was just like, damn. The, oh, we forgot to mention, they have little dog tags that kind of let them know what level they are. And so she's like plastic and he's silver or something. Well, no, so this is the weird thing, is that platinum is like the bottom rung. Oh, I thought that was oh, no, porcelain. I'm sorry. Yeah, porcelain. porcelain. bottom rung. Yeah. But then like the next one up is like silver and gold. And oh, I'm sorry. Platinum and gold and then silver. Yeah. So it's like a really weird ring. It is weird. So silver is like the highest one. It's okay. Maybe I missed it. But he's obviously higher higher level, way higher level oh, than her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Whoops. So. I, it, it's, isn't silver sh- like stronger than gold? Because isn't gold pretty fucking soft? Gold is valuable. Yes. Yeah. Make necklaces. Teeth out of it. But then, I mean, <laughs> silver is not, I mean, it's pretty malleable too. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. True. Make I, mean, coins. I can understand it was like tungsten or some shit or titanium, but yeah. Vibranium. Yeah. Adamantium. Uh, it's well worth watching. If you like hardcore anime, fucking watch that shit, goddammit. Because yes. there, there's going to be nothing but internet discussions, and you want to be in on it. Like, people have been going hard as fuck on the fucking memes and yeah. threads already online, Twitter, Facebook, etc. on this show. It already has a great buzz. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, I just added it to my queue. There yeah. you go. <laughs> so, can we talk about Big Mouth Season 2? Yes! Uh, oh, my God. Holy Holy shit. Are you watching this shit yet? I've seen Season 1. I haven't seen you Season 2, but season go ahead. Two. Go ahead. Blue, go ahead. You haven't talked in a while. Man, the, the so season one was really interesting because you got to see like it, it basically was about becoming like going through puberty. Well, season two takes that shit and flips it on his goddamn fucking head. So like, uh, it it's it's it follows. It basically continues after season season one, and um, you know the girl and the guy like they run away and like. Just the first fucking episode, because in the in season one, like the magician kid, he yeah. he he fucks his pillow. Like that's how he gets off. Like him and his older brother, like fucks their pillows. It's mm-hmm. fucking weird as hell. And they have pillow babies. Yeah, they have pillow babies. <laughs> but, dude, there's this, like he's he's on the road with, with an actual girl, and he just can't get keep fucking pillows out of his mind. Like they're in a hotel room, and like the girl's in the bed, and or she's in the bathroom, and like the fucking pillow started talking to him. They're like, hey man, you want to have a, like a threesome? And, like, oh, God, damn. Oh, no, wait, hold on, you missed a very important part here so when they're in the hotel room with the, when he's with the actual girl not the, the not the pillow the pillow's in the room too but they weren't talking yet uh they were they were making out because they both ran away mm-hmm. and then he basically he he made a fantasy where he was like yeah i'm a 40 year old magician it's like i'm making oh, out with you oh people. yeah and she was like ew what she's <laughs> like i'm 13 <laughs> he's Damn. like, she's like he I'm went to role play this. yeah he went to role play i was just what like what the oh fuck 
<laughs> yeah, it was all bad. How, ma- how many episodes bad. are on season two? I don't know, but they're all fucking. Made 12, 13. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty long. They're, they're all. Good they're fucking dang as fuck, dude. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Like the the one scene, that, like I was watching with the sweetness, and there's this, there's uh, one of the scenes they go to a Korean bathhouse. I think it's like episode two. It might be actually one, but. um. I guess the girls are, they're kind of talking about having pubic hairs down there. Oh, yeah. And so, like, there's nothing but animated, like, old ladies with pubic hairs and uh, saggy titties. And stuff. Or, no, oh. they were talking about titties. That's what it was. You're talking about the Korean uh, spa? Yeah, yeah. Dude, that shit was fucking crazy. All right. So, they went to a, so this, one of the girls, so this show can only be animated, all right? It's about, like, <laughs> yeah. teenage teenagers. Yeah, yeah. And so this one teenager in high school, she gets she gets boobs. Mm-hmm. And she's the first person to get, like, real boobs in, in high school or whatever. And so all the women are jealous. Oh, all the, the kids are jealous. Yeah. And this one chick, uh, Misty, she has basically no boobs. And she's, like, feeling really sub- subconscious about it. Yeah, she comes like kind of emo and shit. Yeah, too. And, but then her, her parents are like super fucking uh, hippies. Oh shit! And so her mom takes her and her friend to a Korean spa, and she takes off her robe, and she's like, she got like this old lady body. Oh, she's boy. like, you just gotta find it. You know, you gotta be comfortable with your body, blah blah. And they walk into this spa, and they have like this whole musical number yeah. about vaginas <laughs> oh, and fucking shit. titties and shit. Damn. I was just yeah. like, <laughs> they're but, showing everything. Yeah. But what, what was crazy about it too is that they show like the the kids naked too. Which was fucking weird. So you could you see there are small little animated boobs. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, it was it was so fucking crazy. But then like there's a scene where uh, so like the the girl with the, the small boobs, she's she has like a dark side now, and she's like her image oh, is like telling her to do bad shit. Like did it? It's so fucking funny. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's basically like dark Kermit the Frog. Basically, oh, it's shit. so fucking funny. And then like there's a scene where you talking, talking about the worm? No, no, about the the girl with the small boobs. How she has her her reflection. Oh yeah. Her yeah, reflection is yeah. like evil or some shit. She's yeah. telling her like to do bad things, but oh man, this season so far is, is Dude, dank as fuck. So the first one they introduced the hormone, the hormone monsters. Yeah, I remember that. It's fucking great. But in this one they introduced the fucking shame wizard. Oh yeah, that's Dude, right. The it fuck? is so fucking good. The shame wizard yeah. is the he's fucking awesome. He's a uh, Professor Lupin from uh, excuse me. Harry Potter. Oh fuck, really? Yeah. Oh, I need so to see this. Okay. It's fucking he's basically shaming every goddamn kid on the show. It is so fucking awesome. Damn. Cuz it's like people forget that like shame is it's shame is important. Sure. Right? But when you're a kid, it like hits you so hard. Mm-hmm. Of course. You know what I mean? But it's it's an important step that you have to go through and like seeing these kids go through like shame is like the way they do it is like really well done. Yeah, because when, when you're a young kid, you have none. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but then you get it eventually. Yeah. And like they're showing like when all the kids get it. Yeah. And like they all get it like basically the same time. They yeah. Stop shame and shit. And like the way they the way they portray shame, it's almost like like fucking like Freddy Krueger or some shit. Well, like if you don't if you don't if you don't talk about him, he doesn't exist. But as you keep talking about him, he starts to get more and more powerful. Yes. And he's like you know it's funny because the Harry Potter reference because he's, he's Professor Lupin, but he's basically like a Dementor. Oh fuck. Like the way yeah. he floats around and shit yeah it's it's really fucking funny just shame the shit out of everybody for like any little thing damn okay it's it's I fucking need, i need to catch up um, on there's, this shit. there's a another there's another hormone monster too that's fucking oh, like retarded well there's a retarded one but there's you're not far enough from the show but there's one that's like a, a young hormone monster mm-hmm. that doesn't know what the fuck he's doing god damn and he's just like he always gives the kid the worst advice <laughs> like the worst advice ever damn. and uh it, that shit's pretty funny dude but, <laughs> There's a scene I just thought about right now. There's a scene where the where the kid goes to like he's getting he's got like two pubic hairs <laughs> and he fucking go oh no. What was it? No, so one of the kids like he has a mustache and his parents wax him. And so oh, his oh, hor- yeah. his hormone monster fucking waxes all the hair off his body, and so he looks like fucking like a dried up fucking scrotum. I mean, oh. he he looks like a fucking penis to begin with, but he like it's so fucking funny. It it's man, that shit's so goddamn crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> once you get later on the show, there's like this episode about Planned Parenthood because they're in uh, the sex ed class, and basically uh-huh. the sex ed teacher is he's basically fucking retarded, mm-hmm. like. <laughs> It's really bad, but they go through like this whole like Planned Parenthood thing, and they actually break down like what Planned Parenthood does because yeah. like, most people think they just do abortions. Yeah, but they break down like everything they do, including abortions. But uh, it's like a really good episode, I think, for for anybody in general. But I feel bad because. 
kids should not watch this show, but kids should watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, I, I mean, yeah, I get you. And, and Nick Kroll, he was on JRE the other day, like uh-huh. yesterday, I think. And he was saying that they have kids that are like 12 and 13 that are watching a show. And he's like, this isn't for you, but... You know, whatever. But it kind of is in some ways. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, but yeah. And, like, the nostalgia of it is really good for adults, which what makes it so fucking entertaining. As awkward as, as it sounds, it seems like if you were going to watch it, you kind of should have an adult with you to explain what is a joke and, and why that joke is funny. Well, yeah, but at the same time, like, they're breaking down so much shit that is, like, true. Yeah. At the time, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, like... It almost doesn't need an explanation, but I guess I mean you're right. Some of the stuff that is jokes, it kind of they go too far. Yeah, right. But at the same time, they, they, it's only too far for like a little kid. Yeah. yeah. But for like adults, it's funny as fuck. But at the same time, when they go through like talking about you know girls getting their periods and mm-hmm. getting boobs, and then like boys getting fucking pubes, and they're and because it's funny because like one of the characters like, apparently has a big dick, mm-hmm. and so like and they're, they also talk about like girls being horny all the time too. Yep. Which no fucking show talks about, which no, I think is good. Not, yeah. Because me, so me and Cam are watching it. And I didn't know this until, like, we were talking, but there's, like, misconceptions about boys and girls, even, like, to this day. Because she was telling me how, oh, you know, it's so much more socially acceptable for, for boys to, to, to masturbate at that age. And I was like, well, not really, because, like, nobody tells you how to masturbate. No. And she, cause she, cause she told me, she was like, well, nobody said, you know, like, how to, like, do this. And I was like, but nobody tells boys either. No. Like, like your dad doesn't tell you that shit. That's, you know, <laughs> Fuck no. You know? It's Make like, sure you put a little spittle on there. You just yeah. fucking figure it out. Yeah. And, and it's still the same amount of, like, if somebody caught you jacking off as a dude, it's the same amount of fucking shit you're going to get as a female that would do it. I mean, I would if guess. So, yeah. I would think so. Yeah. I mean, that sounds logical to me, you know? I, you know, but uh, again, there probably are some women who would argue it isn't, but it seems to be. It seems to be fucking even. Yeah, you know? I mean, t- to me, as like as a, because uh, I think that most women don't understand. Because I understand from like as far as like what I've heard from other women, yeah, that it's kind of like a taboo, a taboo subject. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think they assume that. Uh, boys at the age they talk about jacking off and sex all the time but we don't sex well I mean when once you have sex yes you might but when it comes to like kind of figuring out your own body oh yeah like, not figuring out your no dad. I'm with you on there's that there's no fucking dude that th- there's yeah. no boy that's talking about figuring out their body figuring out their body to another yeah. boy fuck no yeah. or even that like asking happen. about like what type of shit they're going through when you're hitting yeah, you're like I agree hey with man you, you got hair in your yeah. balls the, yet the only thing I was pausing on with the sex of is I, re- I remember like being 5th 6th grade 7th grade and whatnot. you talk about oh so and so's got fucking nice ass body I want to fucking fuck her fuck the shit out of her No, knowing you weren't fu- didn't even know how to fuck <laughs> that's the important but you would part. say dumb shit right. like that that's the important part is that uh, I think most girls that age don't understand that boys have no fucking idea what they're talking about just like girls that age yeah. don't know what the fuck you're talking about but Boys make it worse because they make it seem like they don't. Yes, there you go. There you go. Like some, yeah. like if you're if you're like preteen, teenage years, uh, you shouldn't be boys, listening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They will tell you the most fucked up, ridiculous shit. Like, oh, if you fuck a girl and she stands on her head or some shit, yep. or or you know, squats in the pool or some shit, like she won't get pregnant. It's like, what the fuck? Mm. We'll believe that shit. Of course you will. But you, uh, I think that. Females don't get that same sort of bad advice. They will get either no information at all, mm. or well, probably just no information. But that, to me, that is better than bad information. Yeah, misinformation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's way better than bad information. <laughs> if you use a turkey baster, you can't. Not yeah, you can suck it all out. You're gonna go. You can reuse a condom. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's dumb ass adults still doing that shit. Yeah. Learning, <laughs> learning. I didn't that know shit. that was a thing until I saw a news story about it. I was like, that's why would real. you reuse it? They're disposable. Yeah. And they're literally free. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you don't have money, just go to Planned Parenthood. You, there's there's, there's options. chains yeah. in your couch that you can use to buy a fucking three-pack of condoms. Come on. Now. If you go to a, what, I, I go to condomdepot.com. Okay. I can buy thousands of condoms. Of course. Thousands. For, like, <laughs> very very little money. Yeah. Very little money. TLC used to wear them all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> I remember doing that, like, when I got a new baseball cap. And glued a condom you put a the condom side. on the side of your baseball cap? Yeah, I was fucking, it was the shit back then. <laughs> You, you know what was the, the, one of the also the worst things that that boys did oh, yeah. that I realized as an adult 
people is putting a condom in your wallet. That is the stupidest idea ever. If you're a, if you're a, a male or a female, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Don't put a don't put a fucking condom in your wallet because eventually because you're squishing it all the fucking time. Yep. And it's gonna eventually wear out the fucking lubrication that's in there. Mm-hmm. It's gonna make that kind of brittle. And guess what? You got a baby. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, just leave it out of. Don't put it in your fucking wallet. If you're having sex that particular night, like you are for yeah. sure yeah. having sex, yeah. then absolutely. But leaving it in there for a year and a half, two years, or yeah. whatever. And definitely read the expiration date. Yeah. That is important because they do expire. Yeah. God damn. It. It's, it's not like Vicodin where you can maybe get away with it a little bit later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Condoms definitely don't take that risk. God damn. <laughs> I need to check this fucking show out, man. Dude, yeah, big I, I mean, I've seen season one, fucking but I need great. to check out season one. You know what's funny is that I didn't know who Nick Kroll was oh, until really? I saw him on uh, Jerry the other day. And I was like, holy shit, that's really him in the show. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. literally his voice. That's literally what I imagined he would look like as a kid. You never watched the Kroll show then, huh? No. Okay. And same thing with, uh, was it John Mul- Mulaney? That's him too. Okay. And that's how I imagine he looked. And the girl that plays uh, Gina, mm-hmm. and this season the girl with the boobs, mm-hmm. that is Jane the Virgin. Oh, oh wow. shit! Okay. And that looks pretty much, except for like the moles, that looks just just like, like her. her. That's good shit, man. Good. I love the shit. the female monster because she's fucking. Oh, that's Maya Rudolph. Yeah. You know, oh, that's really? Like her voice. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. They got some voice talent on this shit, man. Yeah. And the hormone monster for the guys is uh, Nick Kroll as well. Nice. And actually the. Hormone Monster was not his idea. It was somebody else's idea. And then he did the voice, and it just kind of stuck. Oh, hormone? Hormone Monster. <laughs> uh, let's, let's switch it up a little bit. Uh, James Gunn, we have talked about this man over and over and over again. We've all got our views on uh, Marvel and what they fucking did based on tweets from 10 years ago. This motherfucker got a new goddamn job. Mm. DC. Pop guy, new dance. D- yeah, Pop guy. <laughs> DC Warner Brothers uh, is... Hiring him for his script writing mm-hmm. and possibly even directing Suicide Squad 2. What y'all think? I think that's a great fit for mm. him. Um, people may want to complain that they're giving this guy a job based on a couple of bad jokes. But honestly, he didn't rape somebody. Uh, nope. I, don't, I think his jokes were not of great taste, but I don't think he should have lost his job over it. Especially given Disney's fucking history of racism and sexual bullshit. So they literally put dicks on the covers of various different videos and they had super fucking racist characters in their movies before. For years. I'm going to go even more recent on you. Um, your face of the MCU, who I love too, yeah. had a ton of fucking bad behavior problems. Basically, he was a lot like Charlie Sheen in the mm. 90s and early 2000s. You know, he was a fu- Robert Downey Jr. was a fucking mess. I'm glad he turned his life around. Crack it. Yeah, you know, doing all kinds of ill shit. Yeah. Doing the most ill shit you could possibly think of. Turned his life around. Um, 10 years ago is a long fucking time. Didn't I, Brian Singer literally had, Brian Singer, to me, has way more controversy than James Gunn. Yeah. Because he still throws sex parties with like underage people there. Yeah. And they just let that shit go. Mm. But I guess it wasn't a tweet, right? So who gives a fuck? Yeah, man. Yeah, that's not a good look. It's not a good look. But I really hope that James Gunn can fix the DC universe. Because, I mean, Suicide Squad was decent, but, you know, what Marvel's been putting out in the movie content wise is fucking on point. Well, and a lot of people have said this, and I think there's some truth to it. Suicide Squad was DCEU's attempt to have a Guardians of the Galaxy like movie. Yeah. You know, because we were all new to pretty much every single one of those characters besides the Batman cameo for the DCEU. Mm-hmm. You know, they were new faces. They had stars, Margot Robbie, Will Smith, um, you know, plenty of big names and shit. And uh, they wanted it to be like this mock kind of crew that worked and was funny and Mm -hmm. entertaining and all that shit much like Guardians well here you have the Guardians writer and director now hopefully doing the sequel you know but hopefully he doesn't basically what copy paste repeat with uh, thinking what he'd done in uh, in Galaxy and the Guardians Guardian of the Galaxy and does the same thing for, for Suicide Squad but you know what one, whatever he does, DC wants it to be as much of a critical and box office hit as Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, well, yeah, definitely that. You know, but you don't so, want to see like fucking like uh, 
like Will Smith turning cracking, into Star Lord. Yeah, becoming Star Lord and shit. <laughs> Damn, telling all. jokes and shit. Yeah, I don't know how it's gonna fucking work out, but I will say this: what will be interesting is what will Batista do. That's what I'm gonna say. He's yeah. already saying that he wants he's gonna leave the role, and he's gonna he actually wants to join Suicide Squad. Yeah, look, Batista is a loyal motherfucker. He's a stand up dude. He's like, no, Gun is my guy. I'm going with Gun. And, and you can't really fault him. He's a guy of fucking outstanding principles and loyalty that you don't see in fucking Hollywood. I wonder, he really is. I wonder who he could play in Suicide Squad. Dude, you put him as a Killer Croc. That's you could pull him as well, Bane. There's already a Killer Croc. Fuck whoever's in that role. That person was fucking horrible yeah, with those shitty ass bad. jokes. You could make him as Bane. You could put him as fucking anybody you fucking want. You could put him as fucking Deathstroke. In it. You know, I don't give a fuck. Batista, he could do some things. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's actually... Uh, one of those surprisingly good actors. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? He's a really good actor. I, yeah. I, I, before Drax, seeing him in Drax, I was skeptical as fuck. And oh, I was he, wrong. Oh, you didn't see him in like other roles? He was in a what was James he in? Bond a while ago. Was he? Okay, maybe yeah. I missed that or just didn't make the he, connection. He was in, he's been in a, a few movies. He's actually, he's a pretty good actor. Yeah, he was He was one of the best things about that Blade Runner shit. 2049. So I haven't watched that because I had to watch the first one again and I probably got to read the book. So Yeah, it's, it's been like 40 years with that shit. It's not a great movie, but he was great in it. Well, so. is he also in that movie like like the hotel or visiting hours or something like that. There's shot. like a hotel where if you get fucking oh, yeah, killed yeah. or shot or something, you go there and it will patch you up or whatever. That's released this year. Yeah. 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 He looks badass. That's the thing. And he, he can fucking act. So I'm down for gun. Good luck fucking to him. I knew he wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna be long before he'd get a fucking another role or whatever. You know what I mean? I, yeah, he was gonna I didn't think so either. especially when it's on something that was like so trivial, like on bad jokes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when people got away with way worse shit. Yeah. You know? And truth be told, nobody really knew what Twitter was 10 years ago. You know what I mean? In, in a lot of, like, you knew, but you didn't know. You know, you, yeah. a lot of people are were social media ignorant, you know, and didn't know that it stayed up there for forever. Unless you're big into tech and IT. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. There were people who didn't know that 10 years ago. I mean, there's, there's fucked up shit that we said on this podcast before. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? But I'll, I'll stand behind it. <laughs> Double but, down. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, fuck your I'll, shit. I don't remember if there's anything that I'm not going to remember, but yeah. there probably is very few things that I, I regret saying on this podcast. You know what? You, we need to get our boy that listened to all the old episodes yeah. back to back. He's, well, he's in, the po- he's in there right take now. Some, take some notes. Yeah, yeah. Tell, yeah. Us, tell us the worst thing we said. Yeah, a- Aiden, what's the worst thing you've heard? Why well, don't uh, mind this? That might come back and bite me his um, hitting fat chicks with a baseball bat. God, oh, yeah. That, was, that was hilarious. That was but that was for self defense. That was just That was just she was over like 250 pounds. Yeah, over 250. I heard Joe. I'm a little guy. I can't fucking get it off of me. I'm like, oh, God. That's why I got to do jujitsu, man. Just come, mm-hmm. come roll with me some time. Now I'm just going to follow that guy's video and just. I'll, tell you that def- I'll show you the defense. You're going to get that goblin bat on him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how to defeat 250 pound chicks. <laughs> yeah, right, I can show you the way. Uh, we should also. There was big controversy, and I know we're going to have oh, to get yeah. in on this. John Henry. Oh, one man, one pickle jar. I don't even remember that. Oh, show. I remember like that. One of our first episodes. Yeah. One man. Remember the guy that was squatting over the fucking jar and it shattered in his ass. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. But we didn't do the shit. <laughs> what we? That was one of our first episodes. Yeah, but I mean, like, what did we say about it? That was bad. Well, that was bad. Just, wa- just watching. It. Yeah. Watching oh, it. watching it. Yeah. It's like a react. <laughs> Um, one, I think this is going to be a bigger controversy, and I don't see why, but we got to talk about it. Netflix has hired Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh, it's going to be play, a Netflix movie. It is going to be a Netflix yeah. one to play the role of uh, John Henry. We've, we've talked about the John Henry kind of folklore stuff before mm-hmm. on this cast. And to be clear, so everybody knows, because we're confused, it is folklore. Mm-hmm. It was not an actual person. Yeah, it might have been based on somebody sure. vaguely. But it was not an actual person. It's like a so black is, Paul Bunyan in a lot of ways. Yes, exactly. You know? So he didn't really fight a train? And, <laughs> yeah. There's like a boxing He was a hardworking man, though. Fictional characters. <laughs> anyway, Prodigy Breakdown. Uh, this, there was some articles, I think, on The Rude and some other places online with people jumping out the fucking window to chastise The Rock for being... Light-skinned, biracial, and taking on a role that they thought should have gone to a, I guess, darker-skinned African-American. They don't recognize The Rock as doing many, quote-unquote, black roles, quote-unquote. These are not my words. They have a problem with the casting in general of The Rock, who is biracial, who has a black father, 
uh, late father, and um, mother was Pacific Actually, Islander. I'm pretty sure his dad is still alive. Oh, he is? I'm sorry. I, yeah, I fucked yeah. that up. All right. I thought he was long gone. No, Shit. no, no. I'm Wrestlers pretty... don't usually live that long. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Rocky Johnson is still alive. Okay. Let me just verify. Double check that. Double check that. But, uh, you know, he's of mixed race. Is he still alive? Yes, he is. Okay. He's 74 years old. Sorry to put that on you, Rocky. It's all good. All right. uh, live your best life in your 70s. Um, Fun fact, the Rock is from Hayward. Yeah, he was born in Hayward. So here's my thing. People play these fucking skin tone, uh, who's black, who's not black bullshit. And it fucking, it, it goes every which way the wind blows, depending on who they're talking about and who you're asking. Mm-hmm. When you talk about someone like Bob Marley or Barack Obama or uh, Tiger Woods or whatever, they, you know, when there, there's someone that you like that's accomplished, mm-hmm. you know, black folks, some black folks, these folks are quick to say, oh, well, we like everything about this person, this particular celebrity. And yes, 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 yes. Oh, I love them. I'm a stan. Yes, slay, slay. Play, but if there's anything that's not up to your liking, if someone is of mixed race with th- this crowd of black folks, they are quick to uh, basically say you're not black enough, which I think is completely fucked up. And I'm someone who I have two black parents, but all my life, because I'm light skinned, people have said, oh, well, you must be mixed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, Look, hold on. I have something in it. This is a problem, too. Is that if you think you're, if you're an African American and you think you're black, do a fucking DNA test. Sure. You are probably way less black than you think. And the problem that I have is that you don't realize how much of your culture is just American. Like, mm-hmm. it's not, you might want to label yourself as African American, like putting emphasis on the African part. But go to fucking Africa. Go to fucking Africa. If you go there, you will understand there's a clear difference between us and uh, our culture and their culture. And it's not the fucking same. And I think that there's uh, so many people in America that want to put so much value on being black that is not, in my opinion, warranted at all. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like me having to be African American does not define who I am. And I think that people that write stories like this, they put way too much value on uh, what they perceive as their ethnic background than what they, how they, how they uh, carry themselves in everyday life and how they, you know, perceive others and how others perceive them. It's just like, it's total fucking bullshit. Like, with somebody to to try to lay, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson low because he's not quote-unquote black enough, it's total fucking bullshit. Like, it it doesn't make any fucking sense to me at all. This uh, character, uh, obviously... Fictional character. Yeah, fictional character. Um, The project probably got greenlit because The Rock is a big fucking household name. A-list celebrity. Well, and yeah. got signed on with it. Now, I would have had no problem if he was alive with Michael Clark Duncan playing the role or whatever. He's he's long gone, you know. He, he would have been perfect. You know, yeah. Michael Jai White, if he could do a good job acting, they were you know. That too. They were saying yeah. Michael Jai White and uh, Terry Crews as well. Sure, yeah. sure. They, they're not a draw as... Nowhere near. Yeah. Nowhere. Yeah. They're not even on the same stratosphere in terms of uh, putting butts in seats, even though this is Netflix, but getting views as the fucking rock. He just, he fucking is a big big draw and I could see if he was like Bradley Cooper playing this role I would be right there with you in terms of having a problem with him I'd be like yeah that's not a good look he is an African American fictional character we need him to be well the the rock is if you in the article it said that he didn't he tries to play he's only black when it's convenient it's one of the things that they said they said that uh, he doesn't you know, talk up the fact that he's black, but I'm like, look, the way you look, you shouldn't have to talk about the way you look. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Like, I shouldn't have to remind you that I'm black on a fucking day-to-day basis. He has never, and I and I watched him back in the wrestling days too. Never hidden from the fact of who no. his father is. He was in the, well, and he was in the fucking Nation of Domination when he was in wrestling. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. An all-black crew of wrestlers. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is, he's been on the show Ballers, where he's playing a you know a former uh, NFL player. You know what I mean? And it, he's he's done plenty of roles where. People know that he's not a white guy. They, they, they know that he's, he, with Moana, whatever, he, he played a role that was 
Uh, he's half Pacific Islander. Well, that was and, and nobody had a problem. They were trying to talk shit about how he was multicultural. I'm like, what is wrong with being multicultural <laughs> or multi? I think what, it, it, there's no problem with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's none at all because obviously you, you're going to have a different experience of as, you know somebody else. Yeah. And nobody in the Pacific Islander community gave him any shit whatsoever that I heard of for no. being in Moana and some other stuff. Well, he also does well, come from one of the most respectful families. Yeah, but I mean, but yeah, yeah. Well, they give him, they, he's both. From Moana, they gave him shit about the. Maui being fat. That was like the big problem. That's the biggest problem people had about that movie. But that but that's was not fucking him. great. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't do the animation. Yeah. <laughs> he just did the fucking voice. Well, man. they also want to pretend like nobody in that region is big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then if you look they at... Are, they are much... Well, I'm not going to say fatter. They are much larger than the average person on this fucking planet. Sure. Like, just on average. Yeah. Because I've met... Uh, when I was when I was in Iraq, I was uh, I hung out with the, um, the Tongan Marines. Mm-hmm. They were so fucking big. Yeah. Like the the smallest guy was like six foot fucking two. I was <laughs> like, dude, dudes. He wasn't fat, but he was fucking huge. Big dudes. You know? Yeah, I was gonna say for the folklore, I'll probably have to go back and read the story to see how well they detail John Henry, but like all the illustration or images that you see, that's of someone's imagination. Like yeah. we it's a it's a fictional character. We don't know what he really looks like or what the Well, because he can't because he doesn't fucking exist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, in in the folklore, he's a big dude, big yeah. strong guy. Hey, check check. Check, you know, Rock is a big, strong guy with a great name, and I don't know, man. I, I don't like this fucking back and forth of you telling someone else you're not black enough is a real bad look. I, that that's yeah. that's gonna that's gonna ruffle my feathers all kind of way. And I'm glad even online I saw a lot of people checking the author and the uh, publication. I think it was the root mm-hmm. uh, about this bullshit because. They're making something into a bigger controversy than it, it has to be. The, the Rock has never been disrespectful to this character. In fact, he talked about his own father reading this story to him as a child yeah. and it being an inspiration to him. How in the fuck are you going to have a problem with that? Because people, <laughs> you know what I mean? Bitches, man. They're whiny bitches. A black father told his biracial son this folklore story about an African American folklore fictional character, and now he's playing him. Forty years later, you know, I, you know, you know, it's funny, and I can guarantee this happened. The same person that wrote this story talked about how Barack Obama was our first black president. Didn't even mention that he was half white. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it's the whole, you know, yeah. It's we we got some fucked up views. Well, it, it's <laughs> funny because like some fucked up views, man. My first time ex- like hearing the whole John Henry stories was the the movie that Disney put out. Yeah, that was the animated one. Yeah, right? the animated one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, it's hey. And That's the weird. other great thing is this might give uh, give this old folklore, mm. you know, some new life in 2018, you know, especially putting Netflix money behind it. Yeah, I think that's that's a good thing. And so uh, if somebody wants to say, like, oh, I don't want to hear that shit. What's well, the same thing as uh, Paul Bunyan? Yeah, it's a, it's a similar, similar, but not the same sure. story. Similar. Yeah. yeah. Different experiences. I'm all fucking for it, even but though I haven't seen a trailer or anything like that. Hopefully one thing it's that's good. interesting, too, is that, you know, John Henry is actually a DC character too because like really? he's inspired off of John Henry the folklore because he's a you know yeah. the guy who plays still oh yeah 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 and he okay. gets Superman's powers and yeah, yeah he walks around with a giant fucking hammer smashing shit with it so he's I mean he comes it's obvious that he's from this folklore I'm just gonna also hit you with this you know um, Denzel played the role of Malcolm X way back in the early 90s uh, Denzel's way darker Oh, than oh, yeah. Malcolm X was. Yeah. Malcolm X was a redheaded guy with basically freckles, almost looking like Jason Kidd. Well, he dyed his hair, but yeah. I, th- I thought it was he was Detroit red because his his hair had a natural reddish hue. I'm pretty sure he dyed his hair. No, he he he, he had the conk in the movie, but I thought the color of it. No, I'm no, no, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure like Denzel real, did. No, oh, like actual Malcolm, Malcolm X? X dyed his hair too. Because it's actually what a lot of. Uh, Muslims in like that region, like actual, uh, like the Middle East region. But they called him red before he was a Muslim. Yeah, no, but because he dyed his hair before that too. But but a lot of people that are Muslim, they do that as well. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I might be wrong too. I, I, yeah, no. All I know is he was a he was well, a light skinned guy. Is all I'm I'm trying to say. I'm trying to see, but like uh, one thing says that his hair was naturally red. Oh, okay. He's a natural redhead. I am incorrect. But in any event. Different skin tone for the actor playing him, and it worked out really well. You know what I mean? Like, come on. It was a great movie. Yeah. So it, give it a fucking chance. Don't fucking shit on something uh, like this. And don't shit on someone just because they're biracial. Fuck you. Yeah, it's so fucked up. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, woo. 
boy. You know, we, we got some issues, man. And the same, the same person that wrote that probably complains all the time about racism. Yeah. It's like, you don't understand, like, the words that you wrote are racist as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And and you, the other thing, he or she doesn't have the balls to say anything to the fucking rock. Yeah. <laughs> How about that, too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's a stand-up guy, too. I'm not yeah, saying he would like bash somebody's nice. fucking head in for their words, but... You know, you're not gonna disrespect him. You yeah. know what I mean, or his father, or you know, or anything with his family. That's fucking. Hey, fuck that. If I get real big, or if we get real big, and someone talks shit about me, <laughs> you gonna joke him out? <laughs> maybe, I'm just saying, open, open invitation. Meet me on the mat. Yeah, there maybe you go. Mat. I like that. That's yeah. good shit. I'll we'll po- we'll record it and post it on YouTube. Yeah. I'll check, check out your silly ass. Anyway, um, Iron Fist season two. We'll talk oh, about yeah. it real quick because time is kind of. Yeah, yeah, we're getting running out. Time. Time. Do it. Uh, Iron Fist season two is worth watching. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna give it a recommendation actually. Wow. Yeah, season one wasn't that good. Season two took some turns. They introduced some new characters that were very interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And the action's better. Uh, if y'all didn't like uh, what's his name playing the Iron Fist? Finn Jones or whatever. Yeah, if you don't like him playing Iron Iron Fist, guess what? Uh, he passes the mantle down. Good. Oh, that's uh, you know what? That's the spoiler well, I needed though. First, they, first it gets stolen, and then they, just, they figure out a way to get it back. And okay. He passes it to somebody else. Good. That's what so, I wanted. Uh, now I'm down to watch it. Yeah. Def- <laughs> I mean, definitely watch it. There are some really good episodes. Um, seeing him kind of be like a. Same, he basically becomes kind of addicted to being like the Iron Fist. Okay. And to see him get fucked up. Mm. Because he gets fucked up in the in the show, like good. real bad, and he gets Iron Fist stolen. All right, and so that whole shit was really good. They have this, they have one of the most interesting characters that I've seen in a very long time. New character in a show. New character. Her name is Walker, Ooh. and she is. Um, I don't want to say schizophrenic. She has uh, split personalities. Yes, she has split personalities. And it's very interesting the way they they okay. handle that. You finished this whole season. Finished the whole season. Oh wow! So it is definitely worth watching. It, Colleen and Misty are in it, right? Co- yeah, that's one of the best parts too. Okay, like that, their relationship is really good. All right, like it's it's really interesting because they they even talk about how they don't, they don't know each other that well, but they they get along really well. And like seeing their adventures are really cool. I wonder if they'll have a spinoff with those two. Uh, I kind of doubt it, but mm. maybe. So, because I know that Mr. Nett's going to need a new arm, semi-spoiler alert, at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was going to say, didn't she get one in, in um, Luke Cage? She did, but it was a janky yeah, was arm. A shitty yeah. I think they've been list. I think literally uh, Mar- Marvel and Netflix have been listening to all the complaints that we've had about Iron Fist. Yep. And Misty Knight. Good. And they're rectifying them in this season. Hey. It's like... Everything you complain about. See? They listen like, to us. They are trying to fix. I, I, I swear to God, even though it sounds like bullshit, I bet you they do listen to podcasts. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I Especially geek yeah. podcasts that talk about this shit. Yeah. Because that's where you get some of the best ideas. We're, we're fucking brutally honest yeah, on here. Somebody's complaining about her fucking arm. Yeah. Good to go. This one's done. We're going to get a new one next yeah. year. You know? So look forward to it. I wonder if they listen to the smaller podcasts. I feel like the bigger ones, just like the... Of the some of the bigger <laughs> ones aren't, aren't real though. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. You got to be willing to be shit on some shit if yeah. it's fucking a turd. You know what I mean. Keep that shit real. Yeah. So, and the other thing is just MCU wise, like we've seen great arms already. So you know you set the fucking bar high with fucking Bucky with the good hair. Oh yeah, we got Bucky with the good hair, and then um, shit. What other? Uh, That's I the only thinking, one I know. Bucky and Misty, but yeah, it was good. It was just Bucky. <laughs> well, we have armor, armor, no, armor man, <laughs> Iron Man, fucking armor and shit too. So oh yeah, we get to see some fucking cool ass goddamn tech. Shit looks good, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, because Old Ninja gave it a decent review too for Iron yeah. Fist too. So I might check it out. And then we get Daredevil season three dropping in a few Ooh. weeks or something. October nineteenth, Daredevil comes back. I haven't, I haven't seen any of the trailers for it yet though. Uh, there's one online. There's one okay. online. Yeah. So Did it drop recently? Yeah, it, and it looks fucking solid. Daredevil's. Arguably the best one. Oh yeah. You know? Well, that it's probably it's it's probably tied between Daredevil and Punisher. Yeah. Because Punisher came out fucking strong, but true. then again, he was also in Daredevil, which he came out strong in that as well. There you but go. There you we'll go. See. Um, and then uh, the only other thing I wanted to really quickly touch upon before we wrap this motherfucking bad boy up. Uh, it was JoJo Friday last Friday. I was going to ask you about that. Oh, my God, man. This she- this season, it's like 38 episodes. It's called Golden Wind, man. It's on Crunchyroll. They only had one episode out. It's Italian 
Twinkie dudes. And when I say Twinkie dudes, let me describe for you. <laughs> I'm talking 68 pounds soaking wet with boots on. That's what these dudes weigh in fucking Italy. Naples, Italy. Fucking blowing the wind. Yeah, man. And gangsters. That's the other thing. There's drug dealing. Shit. There's fucking a mobster shit. There's extortion, racketeering, uh-huh. and fighting. But at the same time, it's being done by twinks. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's all, it, there's a hilarious aspect of it. Uh, there's fucking new stand powers. It's uh, some weird shit. And yes, JoJo listened to the Yuri on Ice fans. <laughs> they said, you not going to out-gay us. We going to go homoerotic to the extreme. So do you need to watch the other seasons to be current with this one? Or can you just jump in? You can try to jump in. You're not going to get everything. Like, they're going to mention characters a lot and just assume that you know. Mm-hmm. You know, like, for example, uh, one of my favorite new ones, the kind of lead of this is Giorno Giovanna. And he He's Dio's fucking son, and if you don't know who fucking Dio Brando is, Dio Brando, yeah, you you gonna be you're gonna be missing out from of context, but you can still fucking jump in if you want to see Italian boys doing gangster shit it's, and it, then hey, if, lick if, at each other. If you like sucking dicks and you're a dude, you love this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a gay show, man. <laughs> I have never fucking backed down from that shit. There's a gangster dude named Bruno that literally licks the lies off of other dudes' faces. I swear to God, dude, that cherry he, scene still have me. Fucked up. That cherry scene was fucking. They, they, JoJo is a show about licking. That's what I fucking found out. That's that's, that's what this anime is about. He licks the lies and he's like, "You're a fucking liar." I'm like, "What the fuck is going on?" Great stand for, uh, powers and whatnot. I think every Friday they'll have an episode, and I'm gonna is fucking this, watch. Is it still on um on a uh, tsunami or on Yes, Kata? it's still airing on there. Uh, Diamond is Unbreakable Part Four, I think, is on tsunami mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. So they won't get to Golden Wind for, for a, a while. while. Yeah, but yeah. Actually, I was going to do one last quick discussion thing with y'all. Tsunami is like seven fucking hours now. Yeah, it's long as fuck Yeah, I now. heard they extended it. It's yeah. like 9 p.m. to 4 in the morning. It has a lot of great animes on there. Dude, That then so they did a remake of, or not even a remake. I would say it's a continuation of Fulu Kulu, F, FCL. Uh, wait. That ain't talking about. FLCL. Yeah. Yeah. And that shit looks crazy. Like, I haven't watched an episode yet, but it looks really, like... From the commercials they show. Actually, I have watched one episode because it, it comes on after Dragon Ball Super. But um, yeah, that show looks crazy as fuck. And it's it's newer animation, but it's kind of a similar story as the first one. I mean, I've never Except watched. Instead of there being a boy with the powers that has like the horn that come out of his head, it's a girl. Nice. And they talk about fucking in it, which is kind of crazy. Dude, they get away with quite a bit, man. Yeah. I was gonna ask y'all, what would you like to see on Toonami? You know, just to expose some people to, you know, some stuff that you like that like, isn't on there now. Any, and what if you're gonna if you're thinking, do you have one? Well, all my shit is like I'd have to be unedited. I mean, I would love to see. Well, it's not you talking about series like a sh- yeah, series, yeah, not okay. movies. Well, because I was gonna say Zodiac Wars would be oh, a fun one, yeah, that'd be good, you know, that even though it was good. only one season so far, that'd be interesting, yeah, yeah, that was a good show. If I could, even though they don't own the rights or whatever, if they could, it'd be interesting. I'd love to see fucking Voltron on there. Uh, actually, have you seen a uh, psychopath? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, well. Yeah, that's they might, be good on They there. might have used to have had that. I, really? I, I don't know. Well, I mean, they had One Punch Man on there for a while, too, so I don't see why they, they have My have. Hero Academia, Boruto, and fucking Black Clover mm. all on there. Black Clover's been really good lately. They've been... It's been, Whoa. like, kind of nonstop. They, I need to check. I need to get yeah. current. They got Attack on Titan Season 3 on there, and it airs, like, they dub it and post it up, like, three weeks after this, it airs in Japan, which is fucking ridiculous. This season has been really good. It's been, like, the least amount of Titans ever, Yep. but they answer the most amount of questions. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. But they don't get more questions? <laughs> well, uh, so, They've answered a lot, like, hardcore yeah, through lot. and through. Like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? Like, obviously, we still don't know why there's Titans. No. But, but we're getting closer. Yeah, we know that there's... There's people in there. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's important. And, and yeah. how ti- how different Titans are made. That was a big yeah, lingering yeah. question for years. Yeah. But the other one for Toonami I'd love to see is uh, Darling in the Franks. That, I think that's going to come. Yeah. That's kind so, of a yeah. brainer. Yeah. yeah that, that fits perfectly with Toonami's whole thing. That's like up there with like, like Gundam Wing. Like, I mean, as far as like animation style and mechs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. like I think it, I think it'll be a good fit for that. I mean, we had fucking, what was it? Uh, Dead Men's Underworld. Yeah. Dead that Man was Wonderland. fucking dang as fuck. Yeah. 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 Y
Ooh, that's a good question. Cold Gaius is really good. Yeah, that would be a good one to add. Yeah, I, I haven't finished it. I never finished that one, but you're right. The other one they have they've never had on there any of the Fate series, like Fate Zero, Fate oh, Unlimited yeah, Blades. Those are really good. That'd same, be perfect. The same for Sword Art Online too. I don't think they had that on there. No, I think they do. Oh, I think a, they do. There's a new season out. Just came out last week. Oh shit, really? Oh yeah, the first episode was I think it was supposed to be an hour long, but it's like 43 minutes basically. Oh, yeah. Shit. Um, it's fantastic, and Kirito might have died at the end. Oh so, fuck! Yeah, that was you know, really interesting. Spoiler alert! God damn! <laughs> Dude, you still gotta watch the movie. I do. Ordinal scale. Yeah, man. I like that. So in that in that movie, like it's all AR, AR augmented reality, and like he's like more into the VR type shit. Mm-hmm. But that's that fucking montage of him powering up in AR. It's it had I had fucking goosebumps. This shit was awesome. Badass. Uh, did y'all ever watch? Um, this was one that Stitch recommended. Um, um, food Wars. I still haven't. No. It, I, it would be a comedy one, but I, I'd like to see... Basically, it's a jiggly cooking show. Yeah. But it, And it doesn't usually fit in the action, but it would help break it up. you got seven hours well, to work with. So it's... So food shows for me right now, they're like... They're not difficult to watch, but... I have like a different relationship with food at this point in my life. Okay. I, I don't want to watch a food show while I'm fasting. I, I can so, see that. <laughs> that's I, like a problem. I, I like, can see that. It's like watching porn when you're trying they, not to they do make They do make it look delicious, but there's like... There's the humor to it. It's a funny anime too. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I think Toonami would do well because that has fucking three seasons or something. But they're doing they're doing it fucking well, man. Seven like hours to, and they have all the fucking like best of hits with anime. I like to see them bring on like some of their sports shows, like the swimming. I can't remember what the knit swimming one was, but the basketball one is fucking crazy too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've always heard like good. Those seem to do better in like Japan and yeah. whatnot than they do over here. But I've heard there are some good ones, like the badminton one got. Pretty good reviews. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the fuck. I love that man too. I used to play it all the time. That shit was great. Just like uh, all the Filipinos at uh, my high school used to do that well, shit. Yeah, same thing. With no Memorial, they had uh, like one of the best teams in like the nation. Nice. So it was crazy. Pretty much all Filipinos on the team. Well, all Asians, but yeah. 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 I remember I tried out for the team. Though I was, I fuck, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Yeah. I got all my own. So. I can't. That that shuttlecock just fucking throws me off. Something that's going fast and slows down and stop. Yeah. Just, that's I'm preparing slow. it. For, I'm preparing it for the, for it to be over here, but it stopped over here. So that slow cock fucks you yeah. up. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I did that long deep one. <laughs> Real quick, props out to uh, the fact that we're pr- finally going to be able to change our fucking PlayStation names. Like 20, 15 years later, it seems like. Well, you know what's funny is I I saw all these people that were saying like their names were ridiculous and they mm-hmm. wanted to change them a long time ago. I'm like, I've had the same name since I was. Maybe 13. Okay. Cronus has always been my shit. Yeah. So just, how about this? Don't make a ridiculous bullshit name. <laughs> like, you know, Bong Toker fucking 69. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Some of these guys were nine years old, though, back in yeah, the PS3 days. Probably weren't smoking that much weed back then. <laughs> so, it was like, funny, though. They were, they were fucking little kids. and like, oh, I like, um, big digging them down or yeah, something like that. 69. There's some dumb, XXX. really bad names out there. And every now and again, you'll see uh, Sony just fucking say, nope, you can't have that fucking name. It's too offensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people go too far with that shit, but it's good that they can change them finally. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good consumer friendly fucking decision out there. All right, y'all want to wrap it up? We can wrap it up. All we, right, you know? Blue, what you got populating? Fuck, I don't have anything pop off this weekend. <laughs> nothing? Yeah, fuck, I ain't got nothing. I'm doing nothing this weekend. Holy shit. God damn. Uh, um, maybe help me. Oh yeah, we're gonna be building. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be building a fourth wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. But uh, other than that, I'll probably, uh, probably just be chilling, uh, do some biking. Uh, I'm, I need to get back on my anime game because my, my goal was to watch two anime episodes a day, but I've been slacking because work has been kicking my ass. So, mm. yeah. Well, you, were on, you were on Darling and the Franks. You ever- yeah, I got, um, I got to the point where... Shit, I can't even remember. Because I know he, he, controls, he can ride in the suit with her. But he's already done like his third one and he survived. Oh wow, you're like way behind. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I'm hell of behind. But yeah, I'm trying to catch up. There you I know go. I, I caught up with My Hero Academia, but then I fell off again. Okay. But I'm I'm trying. I'm, I'm going to get back to my two animes a day so yeah. I can catch up with you guys. There it is, Chronos. What you got? All right. So if y'all have noticed my shirt that I'm wearing right now, it's. I was going to ask about that. It's fucking dope. It's pretty dope looking. Uh, so this is a shirt. It's a uh, if you look up Boom Slank. Uh, B O O M S L A N K. I'm pretty sure I said that right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, we met this guy at the Crunchyroll Expo. Yeah. And he was a cool guy. He's from Nigeria. And he, this isn't an anime or even a manga yet, but he's trying to get there. And so he's selling apparel of his artwork. And the guy was dope. Yep. So if you could 
check him out and buy some of his apparel. Hopefully, get like the actual anime or manga created. That'd be great. Um, Prodigy bought a shirt as well. He bought one from me. So. Uh, one of the ones that we wanted, they didn't have it in a shirt. They just had it in, like a poster or something like that. Yeah, but, but it's coming soon. Yeah, he's got a plan. Yeah, the guy was the guy was really fucking cool. So <laughs> I forgot to talk about it like way back when we went to Crunchyroll. So. Yeah, I think uh, hey, we yeah. talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I felt oh, like okay. you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's all good. Well, give him another shout out. Yeah. yeah. So he seemed he seemed like a good guy, man. Yeah, seemed like a good dude. So other than that, you know, just uh, going to work some more on the Infinity Base. Hopefully, at the end of October, I can or we. Can do a podcast from in there because I'm really tired of doing this in a fucking dank ass uh, garage. <laughs> <laughs> so I know y'all can see my fucking refrigerator, my fucking washer and dryer in the back. This is not the way we normally do a podcast. That's if right. If you're a new viewer, so it's normally in like a room. But we're going to get it. The next place is going to be dope. Might have a green screen, might not. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to have a pool with bitches. Yeah. Um, and I made a fucking bet with somebody on Twitter that might cost me a whole lot fucking on there. Uh, I made a bet that uh, if. Captain Marvel makes less than 700 million worldwide. I basically take over this motherfucker's Twitter handle. I'll tell you who it is next week. Oh, shit. Oh, if shit. it makes over 700 million, then your boy is actually going to have to give up my fucking Twitter handle. Is this, We did a high stakes bet online. God damn. So <laughs> what the I, I may have uh, uh, ran my mouth a little bit too much <laughs> on them interwebs. Uh, Twitter fingers got the best of me. We will see. Don't, don't watch Captain Marvel, though. Yeah. <laughs> help, help your boy out. He's going to be out there protesting <laughs> shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, man. All right. Usually we have old ninja fucking do that fucking end of the shit promo. <laughs> so you can reach us at, uh, it's basically be the BTI everywhere. If you go to uh, Stitcher.com. Oh, not Stitcher. Jesus Christ. We're on Stitcher, though. SoundCloud. <laughs> if you go to Stitcher.com forward slash be the BTI, they'll reach you nowhere. Yeah. If you go to SoundCloud forward slash be the BTI, they'll be us. YouTube forward slash be the BTI, that's us. Facebook, be the BTI, that's us. Uh, Check our website. We? Basically, we're, yeah. Benhat.com forward slash be the BTI. Production, yeah. Forward slash be the BTI. I got updated. I haven't done it in a while. Uh, yeah, we're everywhere you can find a podcast. We're out there. Yep. Google us. And uh, I'm going to be on Twitch. I'm going to do some Twitching of Black Ops 4 on Friday or Saturday. It was a short one, didn't I? It was a short one. Wow. Wow. Went too long. Uh, we're going to try this one more time? We received a good no. transmission. I messed this all up. So we did. There Did the go. intro. Uh, <laughs> also, every Wednesday night, we are live yes. on yes. YouTube. Except for maybe thing, uh, not Thanksgiving, but Halloween. We'll Halloween. figure something out. Maybe. We, got a, we got a few weeks. Yeah, we, we got, got a few, few weeks, weeks, but we might not be live on that day. Yeah. Only because it would be annoying with like the ringing the bell and shit like that. Yeah, because I got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a paper on the door. People can read. I hope. I'd be actually be surprised if you get trick or treaters because you're way the fuck up on this hill. That is true. But there, there's a lot of kids that live around here, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, true, too. Fuck them kids, though. Yeah. Now you go to a rich area if you, you, you go trick or treating. Yeah. The big candy bars. The whole bar? Not the bar? I do live in the hills, though. Mm. It's living the Vietnam only a few decades ago. And through his God given genius of science, man at last has succeeded in penetrating further and further into the unknown. You gotta put the thick space. in the warm. Mm. You seen that part on uh Alright. You gotta keep watching uh Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Gotta put the put your thick in the warm. <laughs>